The story opens at Ishiyama High School, known as the most dangerous high school in the country. Here, Oga, a first-year student, faces a challenge from Abe, a powerful second-year student. Despite the challenge, Oga pays no attention to his opponent, as he is busy taking care of Beale, a small baby. Abe, eager to fight, tries to separate the baby from Oga, but Beale cries intensely releasing an electrical charge that affects everyone in the vicinity. After these events, Oga meets his best friend, Furuichi, who details how he met Beale during a confrontation with thugs near a river. In an attempt to drown the leader of the thugs in the water, a mysterious individual named Elaine appears and splits himself in half to free Beale. Elaine then retreats, leaving Beale alone with Oga. Although Oga tries to interact with the baby, Beale shows his malicious side by being a criminal. Surprisingly, this leads to Beale becoming deeply attached to Oga, determined not to be separated from him. Upon relating this story to Furuichi, the latter cannot believe what Oga tells him and tries to return the baby to where he was found. However, Beale cries again, generating another electric charge. At this, Oga tries to move through the school corridors without disturbing Beale to prevent her from crying, but the baby uses her electric charge again. This causes Beale to cause a stir in the school every time she cries. Faced with the situation, Oga decides to put the baby to sleep in order to return it to Elaine, and thus avoid the responsibility of caring for Beale. So Oga sets off for the Ishiyama school canteen in order to feed the baby and get him to sleep more quickly. Upon arrival, Oga witnesses several students fighting over the last available portion of food. In an unexpected twist, Beale decides to throw the food into the air, causing a fight between the students over the food. The action fills Beale with joy as she observes this chaos, while Oga questions the true nature of this peculiar baby. After this, Oga goes to Furuich's house with the intention of asking him to look after Beale. However, his friend immediately rejects the request. Beale's reluctance to part with Oga threatens to show the baby the abyss of hell, but this tactic only makes Beale more emotional and increases his affection for Oga. At that moment Hilda, a female servant of Beale's, appears and tries to take the baby away. Beale refuses to part with Oga, which causes her to electrocute everyone with her electric charge. Hilda reveals herself to be a demon in the service of Beelzebub Roman III, the future demon king sent to destroy humanity. She also reveals that Elaine, a mysterious subject, is a dimensional transfer demon who saw potential in Oga. Faced with Oga's refusal to be the adoptive father, Hilda decides to kill him and chases him through the city. She summons her pet demon Aku, but Oga easily defeats her. Despite Hilda's attempts to kill Oga, near a river, Beale goes mad at the sight of blood and generates a powerful electrical charge. Oga manages to calm Beale down and decides to say goodbye to him, but at that moment, a steel tower begins to fall due to the baby's lightning. Oga connects with Beale, and together they unleash an enormous demonic power that destroys the steel tower. Hilda is amazed at Oga's extraordinary ability, while he faints after using Beale's demonic energy. After being unconscious for two days, Ogre regains consciousness in his room, where he is greeted by Hilda. She informs him that from now on, they will work together to raise Beale for the purpose of bringing about the destruction of humanity. The next day, Oga decides to take Beale to the school laboratory in the company of Furuichi, with the intention of having the baby choose between a stuffed animal and a stuffed animal. During this process, Furuichi notices that Beale's tastes differ significantly from those of an ordinary baby, showing a preference for things considered bad. Concerned by this revelation, Oga decides to leave the choice to Furuichi. However, Beale follows Oga crying and electrocutes him. Faced with this situation, Furuichi asks Oga why he does not leave the baby at home instead of taking him to school. Oga explains that Hilda now lives with him and has been accepted by his family, who believe that Oga and Hilda are Beale's parents. In a moment alone, Hilda warns Oga that Beale cannot be separated from from him, as he will cry and electrocute him. She also reveals that the further away, the more powerful the electric charge will be, and if Beale moves more than 50 feet away from Oga, the electricity will become deadly and could kill him. At this revelation, Furuichi realizes that Oga is in serious trouble. At that moment, some bullies from the school decide to kidnap Beale in order to defeat Oga for the first time. Meanwhile, Oga is disturbed to realize that they and Beale are almost 15 meters away from him. Oga admonishes them, warning them not to take another step. 
At that moment, the Sonata brothers, famous thugs, appear with the intention of defeating Oga, followed by the arrival of Abe and another thug named Goodnight. In the presence of these new adversaries, the original thugs are frightened and choose to watch as Oga confronts them, following Oga's orders to stay close. Oga manages to defeat Abe and Goodnight with a single punch, leaving the Sonata brothers stunned. Faced with the threat of these thugs, they decide to use weapons to confront Oga, but he defeats them both with a single, simultaneous blow. After the confrontation, Ogre recovers Beale by beating the thugs who tried to kidnap him. Later in the evening, Ogre returns home to find that Hilda has prepared dinner, establishing a harmonious relationship with Oga's family to the point of being fully accepted. This situation surprises Oga, who did not expect such a change. Determined to take a break from his responsibilities with Beale, Oga opts to take a bath. However, his attempt at relaxation is interrupted by the appearance of Elaine, who joins Oga in the bath and informs him of the real distance between him and the baby. This situation means that Oga cannot fully relax in Elaine's company. At the end of the bath, Elaine breaks in half and brings with him Furuichi, who was worried about Oga. In the middle of the conversation, the question arises as to why Beale has chosen Oga out of all the people in the world. Elaine responds by explaining that, as a demon lord, Beale is only interested in individuals with great strength, who are rude, defiant, and have no regard for others. Understanding this, Ogre reflects on the need to find someone even tougher than him in order to free himself from the responsibility of caring for Beale, allowing the baby to become attached to someone else and take his attention away from Oga. In the underworld, the demon Lord Beelzebub is divided with several demons. At one point, one of his servants informs him that Oga is responsible for looking after his son. Beelzebub rejoices to note that Oga seems to be a rather rough person. Later, he remembers that he forgot to deliver Beel's favorite toy, so he orders it to be delivered immediately. Back with Oga, problems persist with Beel, who unexpectedly relieves herself on Oga's head. Meanwhile, Hilda arrives at the school to track down Beel and deliver her favorite toy. However, the school bullies seek to confront her, causing Hilda to defeat the delinquents and eventually reunite with Oga. At that moment, Beale was on the verge of tears, about to release her electric charge. However, Hilda shows her favorite toy, calming Beale down immediately. Beale begins to play with her toy allowing Oga a brief respite. Hilda then asks Oga if he has found someone stronger and tougher than him, to which Oga replies in the negative. Hilda suggests that someone should take charge of Ishiyama school, prompting Oga to go to the school's headmaster for help. Upon arriving at the headmaster's office, Oga realizes that the headmaster is an ordinary man, prompting him to continue his search of the school for someone who can take care of the demon baby. Meanwhile, Beale cries and hurts Oga and Furuichi with her electricity due to her hunger. Hilda decides to go to the school canteen to buy cow's milk for Beale, but a fight between students causes the milk to fall on the floor, causing Beale to cry loudly and causing great destruction. After these events, Oga decides to have a moment alone with Beale to convey to him the idea that a man should not cry so easily. He explains to her that tears have the power to wash away pain and suffering, becoming weapons when they are really needed. Oga asks Beale not to cry whenever the occasion arises. However, the conversation is interrupted when the Sonata brothers show up on a motorbike and kidnap Beale. Oga, with his great speed, begins to follow them, urging the baby not to shed tears. Beale decides to hold back her emotions. At that moment, Elaine appears to help Oga using his dimensional transfer ability, teleporting in front of the Sonata brothers to stop them. After this confrontation, Oga is reunited with Beale and again uses demonic energy to defeat the Sonata brothers in a single blow, returning home with Beale. However, Beale's favorite toy breaks at that moment, causing the baby to start crying and causing trouble for Oga again. At night, Oga experiences a dream in which Beale has grown enormously turning into a giant monster that wreaks havoc when he cries due to a lack of food. This dream leaves Oga completely frightened when he wakes up, and he realizes the urgency of finding a replacement stronger and tougher than himself. Hilda provides Oga with special food for Beale, instructing him that the baby must be fed five times a day to avoid crying. Determined, Oga takes the food to school, but on the way, he notices that Beale begins to cry, triggering chaos once again. To calm the baby, he gives her food right then and there, 
but accidentally forgets to put Beale's food on the floor as he continues on to school. Once at school, Oga begins to receive electric shocks from Beale, who demands his food. At this point, Elaine introduces himself to the boys and reveals that he is now living in Furwich's house, as he feels a strong connection to him from his previous experience. Despite the confusion in the interpretation of Elaine's words by Furwich's family, they allow him to stay in their house. Furuichi is upset by the situation, but Oga, focused on finding food for Beale, ignores his friend's problems. Elaine, trying to help, proposes to obtain breast milk, first from her own breasts and then from Furuichi's. Getting no results, Oga decides to go to the canteen but finds no food. He then goes to the vending machines, where he buys some yogurt and stops some thugs from buying the drink. They get angry but are easily defeated by Oga. The bullies reveal that they were planning to buy the yogurt for Kanzaki, a dangerous third-year bully leader known for sending many people to the hospital with his kicks. Upon learning of this, Oga decides to search for Kanzaki to become Beale's father. During his search, Oga asks his followers about him in order to locate him quickly. Meanwhile, Kanzaki is with his bodyguard Shiro and his follower loyal Natsu, discussing about Oga and how they should get rid of him, as he has caused a lot of commotion in the school. Kanzaki kicks Shiro hard due to his doubts about whether his leader can defeat Oga, forcing him into silence. However, the meeting is interrupted when Oga shows up at Kanzaki's base to accomplish his goal. Upon seeing him, Oga is pleased to note that Kanzaki appears to be a dangerous subject. One of Kanzaki's followers tries to threaten Oga, but Beale is disappointed to see that he is weak and ignores him. The follower tries to attack Oga and Beale, but is quickly stopped by Shiro, who decides to confront Oga on his own. In another instance, Oga is immersed in thoughts about how to deliver Beale to Kanzaki. At that moment, Furuichi appears with the intention of saving his friend, suggesting that he and Oga are there to offer offer their services to Kanzaki instead of fighting. However, Shiro is reluctant to accept Oga so readily into Kanzaki's gang, as he still does not trust him. At this point, Kanzaki proposes that Shiro test Oga's strength right away, and Shiro agrees to face Oga. However, Oga decides to knock Shiro out with a single punch to the jaw in a matter of seconds. Kanzaki congratulates Oga and accepts him into the group, but Shiro comments that the fight is not over yet. Kanzaki then kicks Shiro, indicating that he is no longer useful to him. Oga is pleased to see the full evilness of Kanzaki. Shiro reveals to Kanzaki that Oga is hiding something from him, which worries him for his leader. With all his might, Shiro stands up again. Witnessing this, Kanzaki tests Shiro's loyalty by ordering him to jump out of the living room window, leaving everyone shocked. Angrily, Oga punches Kanzaki and decides that he cannot be Beale's surrogate father. Kanzaki tries to use his special kick, but Oga stops him with one arm. Using Beale's demonic energy, Oga throws Kanzaki out of the window and defeats him with a single blow, surprising everyone and making Beale happy. In the end, Oga realizes that his attempt to get rid of Beale has failed once again. At night, Oga again experiences a dream in which he finds himself in the middle of an ocean. Realizing that it is a dream, he forces himself to wake up quickly. Upon waking up, Oga discovers that his house is flooded because Beale won't stop urinating. Confused, Oga wonders what is going on. Hilda assures him not to worry, as Beale's urine is clean and possesses sacred magical powers. However, Oga learns that Beale is generating a considerable amount of urine capable of flooding an entire city. He asks Hilda to do something about it. Hilda is forced to place a seal on Beale to temporarily send his urine to an alternate dimension. However, she informs Oga that this seal will only last for a maximum of three hours, so he must find a solution quickly. Oga notices that Elaine is watching an advertisement for mystical diapers so he decides to go to the supermarket in search of these diapers for Beale in order to prevent a flood in the city. At the shop, Oga meets Natsu, who informs him that he has defeated Kanzaki, one of Ishiyama's Tohoshinki, the four most powerful guys in the school. Natsu warns Oga about the problems he could face by defeating one of them, but Oga ignores him concentrating on finding a suitable nappy for Beale. He discovers that the mystical diapers he was looking for are out of stock. Meanwhile, Natsu leaves the shop to take a shopping trolley to the exit. Four criminals enter and take the customers, including Hilda and Furuichi, hostage. 
The situation attracts the attention of the police, who surround the shop to prevent the criminals from escaping. Oga, seizing the opportunity, begins to interrogate the criminals about their criminal lives to determine if they could be surrogate parents for Beale. Each criminal recounts their misdeeds, but the leader becomes angry when he realizes that they have committed more nonsense than crimes. He starts beating them and shooting around to intimidate the hostages. Beale, attracted by the gun, has his seal attacked on it. The leader decides to take the baby hostage to avoid capture. At this point, Hilda proposes to help the leader escape if Oga is willing to be Beale's father. However, Oga decides to act, defeats the thieves in one blow, and Beale's seal is broken, causing a flood in the marketplace. Oga asks Hilda to do something, and she summons Aku to take them to the ocean, where they allow Beale to urinate and prevent the flood in the city. At night, Beale cries again, preventing Oga from falling asleep. To calm him down, Oga decides to play heavy metal music for him, hoping that this will soothe him to sleep. However, Oga accidentally unplugs the headphone cable, generating a loud noise throughout the house and attracting the attention of his sister who appears to reprimand him. Subsequently, Beale wakes up again and starts crying, electrocuting Oga. The next day, Oga faces threats from several thugs who notice his strange behavior. We discover that Oga has spent the night without sleeping, keeping his eyes open. When Abe and Goodnight try to attack him in his sleep, Oga quickly awakens and easily defeats them. He then retreats to the rooftop to meet Furuichi, at which point Oga notices a strange mark on his right hand. Surprised, Hilda and Elaine explain that it is the Zebel spell, a symbol of the contract between Oga and Beale, allowing Oga to contain the baby's powers. Elaine reveals that the mark will grow with each of Oga's battles, and as Beale grows fonder of him, urging him to continue fighting. Oga, however, decides to abandon violence to get rid of the Zebel spell and free himself from Beale. This decision surprises Furuichi, who is unconsciously beaten by Oga as he expresses his skepticism. After this encounter, Oga crosses paths with the Sonata brothers, but this time he decides to refrain from violence, expressing his new stance against it. The surprise of the brothers is evident when they hear these words coming from Oga. After school, Oga looks for Beale near the river to remind him of the importance of keeping promises. He asks the baby to avoid crying as long as he is not involved in fights. Later, Oga is harassed by several thugs who try to ambush him, but he chooses to escape and swim across the river instead of resorting to violence. Elsewhere, Hilda and Furuichi cross paths by chance and decide to walk home together. However, they are ambushed by a group of thugs who knock them unconscious and take them to one of the Tohoshinki, named Haimkawa. Haimkawa, the son of an influential businessman, has hired criminals to kidnap Hilda, who, due to the drugs administered, is unable to move normally. Haimkawa uses Hilda as bait to lure Oga and communicates with him through Furwich's phone, asking him to come to his hideout. Hours later, in Haimkawa's lair, Elaine appears, who splits in two to reveal that Oga is inside him. Oga defeats several of Haimkawa's followers, demonstrating his sense of justice. Despite the resistance of Haimkawa, who has a steel band around his stomach, Oga delivers a powerful blow thanks to the Zebel spell. He uses this power to defeat the Tohoshinki while teaching Beale the importance of protecting friends in dangerous situations. After this confrontation, Oga notices that the Zebel spell has grown considerably due to his numerous battles. After several days, Oga manages to reduce the size of the Zebel brand by spending a whole week playing video games and avoiding conflicts with bullies. Hilda, annoying by his behavior, breaks Oga's console, but offers him toys for him and Beale. Together, they build a cage, which turns out to be a device for imprisoning demonic monsters. Oga, accidentally activating it, becomes trapped with Hilda, depending on Beale to free himself. Beale, though awakened, proves inept at solving the cage puzzle, infuriating Oga, who activates the Zebel spell. Despite destroying the cage, the Zebel spell grows again, forcing Oga to go three days without wrongdoing. Later, Furichi notices that Oga has brought dangerous toys for Beale. Activating a chest, they all receive doctor's outfits, and Oga decides to use the situation to diminish the Zebel spell's mark by treating the wounded. However, demonic instruments cause chaos in the school infirmary. Upon discovering a device in Beale's head, Oga activates it 
healing everyone and reducing his mark. However, accidentally activating a toy bomb, Ogre regrows into Zebel's spell as he confronts the criminals again. After a few days, in a new scene, Natsu and Shiro visit Kanzaki and Haimkawa in the hospital. They inform them that Kunieta, one of the four Tohoshinki members, will soon return to Ishiyama, along with other girls from the school. Natsu comments that changes are coming to Ishiyama. On the other hand, Oga and Beel begin to share time with the family. At this point, Oga's mother suggests that both Oga and Hilda should take Beel to the debut in the park. This event involves meeting the community of parents with babies in the park, exchanging information, seeking advice, and allowing the baby to socialize and make friends. Oga's mother mentions that her own park debut experience was ruined by Oga when he was a very aggressive baby. After hearing this, Hilda urges Oga to make the park debut with Beale, as she will be busy watching a soap opera. Because of this, Oga chooses to go to the park with Furuichi and Beale. However, Furuichi decides to wander around in an attempt to find an attractive girl leaving Oga alone with Beel. The baby asks Oga to throw him, as parents usually do with their children. Oga, in an impulsive act, throws Beel far away, forcing him to chase him quickly so as not to exceed the allowed distance. After a few moments, Oga manages to catch the baby in mid-air. At that moment, Oga notices the presence of a group of mothers nearby and decides to strike up a conversation to participate in the debut in the park. However, both Oga and Beale adopt mischievous expressions, frightening the mothers who choose to flee. A mysterious girl, carrying her younger brother on her back, approaches Oga fearlessly, and he decides to make his debut in the park with her. They try to have ordinary conversations about babies, and Elaine appears to provide them with demonic toys. Eventually, Oga and the girl lose sight of the babies, which leads them to search for them in the park. Oga finally finds them after considerable effort. The girl recognizes that Oga is not as bad as he seems. However, the previously frightened mothers return with a policeman, considering Oga a suspect. The policeman mistreats Oga and, subsequently, the girl when she tries to intervene. Faced with this situation, Oga decides to kick the policeman in the crotch and place him in a bin, forcing Oga and Beale to escape from the park to avoid further trouble. After this incident, the girl returns to her home, a large temple, where she is greeted by several subordinates. It is revealed that this girl is Kunieta, a member of the four Tohoshinki. She chooses to return immediately to Ishiyama school with the intention of teaching Oga a lesson because of all the trouble he has caused. After some time, Oga and Furuichi arrive at the school and notice that the Ishiyama girls have returned, which fills Furuichi with joy. Furuichi then suggests to Oga that they should find Queen Kunieta soon to appreciate her beauty, taking him along as he searches the school grounds for Kunieta. Meanwhile, Kunieta moves through the school corridors in the company of his most loyal followers, commanding respect and avoiding any confrontation. In one incident, Abe tries to behave inappropriately, but Chayaki, one of Kunieta's followers, skillfully defeats him with pressurized water guns. Later, Goodnight challenges Kunieta to a fight on the condition that if he wins, she must go on a date with him. Nin, Kunieta's right-hand man, is about to confront Goodnight, but Kunieta intervenes using his wooden sword, keeping the fight going. Kunieta continues his search for Oga, as he has been wreaking havoc in his absence, sending numerous people to the hospital and taking part in various incidents. On his way, he encounters Kanzaki and Haimkawa, who initially seem to want revenge but decide to welcome him back and leave. Later, Furuichi and Oga meet Kunieta who notices Oga but realizes that he does not recognize her. Beel, however, seems to remember her. Kunieta becomes nervous as he engages Oga in a duel, using his wooden sword to attack him. Despite his special techniques, Oga survives and notices Beel's admiration for Kunieta. In an unexpected twist, Oga asks Kunieta to be Beel's mother, which causes Kunieta to become confused and nervous, revealing his growing feelings for Oga. Later, Furuichi expresses his displeasure towards Oga, thinking that he was flirting with Kunieta. However, Oga reveals his true intention. He plans to have Kunieta take care of Beel, 
as the baby was impressed with the girl's strength. On the other hand, Nin confronts Kunita and asks him about his feelings for Oga. Kunita's answer reveals that she doesn't think Oga is as bad as he seems and her response leaves her blushing. Nin, realizing that Kunita is starting to like Oga, reminds her of the rule of Ishiyama's women's group, Red Tails, no boyfriends. If a member has a boyfriend, she must resign from the group. Despite this, Kunieta assures Nin that she has no plans to leave the Red Tails. Meanwhile, a group of gang members known as MK5 appear before Oga, Furuichi and Hilda with the intention of assaulting them. However, Oga and Hilda team up to fight the thugs, defeating them with relative ease, leaving the students watching the scene in awe. Kunieta, witnessing the fight, learns that Oga and Hilda are supposedly married, which arouses jealousy in her, leading her to leave the scene. As Oga and Furuichi discuss the plan for Kunieta to stay with Beale, they are interrupted by Natsu, who is surprised to learn of Oga's fight with Kunieta. Hilda, on the other hand, seeks a confrontation with Kunieta to gauge her strength as Beale's potential adoptive mother. During the brief fight, Hilda recognizes Kunieta's strength, although she still does not consider her as powerful as Oga. Kunieta attempts to continue the fight, but is stopped by her followers, who inform her about Nin and Chayaki, apparently injured by Oga. Believing Oga to be responsible, Kunieta decides to confront him on the roof of the school. In the midst of the confrontation on the rooftop, Oga, not understanding why Kunieta is so upset, decides to resist her attacks without fighting back. Meanwhile, Nin wakes up and learns that Oga and Kunieta are fighting. In a flashback, it is revealed that Oga ignored Nin's challenge to a duel in the past, as he had a problem with Beale to deal with. Returning to the present, Nin is stopped by MK5, who reveal that they attacked the girls on the orders of their leader, Miwa, in order to provoke the fight between Oga and Kunieta. Natsu intervenes to stop MK5 and allow Nin to reach the rooftop to explain the misunderstanding to Kunieta. Upon learning the truth, Kunieta is shocked and tries to apologize to Oga. However, he reveals that he received the blows in the hope that Kunieta would accept Beale in the end. Hilda intervenes, declaring that Kunieta is not yet superior to Oga, thus foiling Oga's plan to make Kunieta Beale's mother. After a few days, Oga decides to buy a fish kibble for Beale. However, just as he is about to give a piece to the baby, a stray cat appears and steals the kibble from the protagonist. Despite Oga's initial threat, the cat seems to take a liking to him and decides to stay by his side. Oga is forced to take the cat home, where Beale begins to experience jealousy due to the closeness between Oga and the new guest. Surprisingly, the cat also establishes a connection with Hilda, further intensifying Beale's jealousy. The situation becomes more complicated when Beale decides to challenge the cat to a fight in the park. Oga and Hilda chose to observe the confrontation. To everyone's surprise, the cat easily defeats Beale. Later, a gang of stray cats appears, threatening Beale and the cat for invading their territory. Despite Hilda's intervention, Oga asks them to wait a moment. The cat, initially frightened, is given determined protection by Beale, who shows courage in the face of the gang of cats. Impressed by Beale's determination, Oga chases the gang away, praising Beale for her lack of fear. Observing the connection that forms between Beale and the cat after the incident, Beale decides to teach the cat to be more intimidating with his gaze in order to overcome his fears. After that, Oga is forced to take both Beale and the cat to the children's play center. Once there, he meets Kunita, whom he fails to recognize as she is not dressed as a student and treats her like the girl he met in the park. Meanwhile, Beale and the cat play with Koda, participating in a duel to build a tower taller than the other children. However, an explosion occurs due to one of Beale's toys, resulting in victory for Beale's team. Beale and Koda celebrate, while the cat looks on in admiration. On the other hand, Oga decides to take Beale and the cat away from the play center to avoid possible trouble. On the way, a gang of stronger cats threatens the gang that tried to attack Beale and the cat. The cat decides to intervene and uses his intimidating stare, causing the stronger gang of cats to flee in complete panic. After this incident, the cat decides to say goodbye to Oga and Beale, 
as he has plans to make friends of his own. Thus, Beale and the cat have a sad farewell. After a few days, we watch as Heimkawa disperses money to various individuals in order to obtain information about Oga and carry out his desire for revenge against him. He then devises a plan to lure the woman away from the dining room allowing her to supply Oga with expired food in order to weaken him and satisfy his desire for revenge. On the rooftop, Hilda intervenes by holding Oga and bringing him food for Beale, as well as an underworld breakfast for him. However, Furuichi, feeling jealous, asks Oga for a chance to taste the food prepared by Hilda. Ogre readily agrees, which causes Furuichi to fall to the ground after tasting a demonic meal. Oga then consumes the bread he bought in the dining room, which pleases Heimkawa from afar. However, Ogre reveals that, having tasted food from the underworld, he has developed an immunity to any bad food, thwarting Heimkawa's plan. Heimkawa decides to find another method to defeat Oga. He hires criminals in disguise to attract Beale's attention and use him as a hostage. A guy disguised as Gohan, an anime character, appears, but Beale notices the fake due to the wrong color of chopsticks and Oga defeats him with one blow. Later, Heimkawa tries to seduce Furuichi through a man disguised as a woman, but Elaine intervenes, revealing the truth and taking Heimkawa and his followers to a deserted island. Heimkawa is left in debt and decides to trick Oga by disguising himself as Gohan, but his disguise is quickly discovered and Oga defeats him decisively. After these events Heimkawa, in his quest for revenge, notices that several individuals from another school are about to make a surprise attack on Oga. The presence of these non ishiyama students infuriates Heimkawa as an intrusion into his school's territory. In a rage, Heimkawa decides to take on all the attackers with all his skills. However, after a while, Kanzaki wakes him up and offers him a leftover yogurt from the vending machine. At that point, Heimkawa chooses to postpone his revenge against Oga until later. After a few days, Beale begins to experience episodes of crying at night, generating a din that disturbs the sleep of Oga's entire neighborhood. Faced with this situation, Oga tries to find a solution to the problem, while his father tries to apologize to the annoying neighbors. Despite his efforts, the crying persists, affecting the sleep of everyone in the family. In an attempt to calm Beale, Oga decides to give him a hot bath, but Hilda reveals that in the past, Beelzebub has taken him to a magma bath, generating a rejection of hot water. Oga tries to bathe Beale with warm water, but he refuses, and an accident plunges him into hot water, causing Oga to cry and an electric shock. Oga's family, unable to sleep because of Beale's constant crying, looks for ways to cheer him up. The mother suggests that Oga sleep with Hilda and Beale, arguing that babies like to sleep with their parents. However, Hilda's interruption by getting up to go to the toilet causes Beale to wake up and cry. Oga's father is forced to apologize again to the neighbors to appease their complaints. As the problem persists, Hilda decides to look for a special toy in the underworld to calm Beale down. Meanwhile, at Ishiyama school, Oga's classmates experience strange dreams in which they try to attack him, causing chaos in the school. This all turns out to be a dream of Oga, who finally wakes up after days without sleep. Oga's mother proposes to take care of Beale and sleep with him, but Oga insists that only he can handle the situation. He takes Beale to his room, where Hilda has returned from the underworld with a toy. Although the noise of the toy is considerable, he manages to get Beale to sleep quickly prompting further complaints from the neighbors about the commotion caused by Oga and his family. Days later, Ishiyama School announces that a skills assessment test will be held the following day. Kao will cover Japanese, arithmetic, science, and social studies, subjects that are not to the liking of the bullies, most of whom have no affinity for study. Later in the evening, Oga sets out to study to avoid failing the exam. However, Beale begins to scribble in his study book. In the process, the baby gets one of the pencils last, which triggers her crying and an electric shock that affects Oga. In another instance, we watch as Beelzebub amuses himself by interacting with various demons in the underworld, noting that he has not slept for an extended period. However, he decides to report on the progress of his son's mission in the human world. One of his followers reports that Beel's human father has managed to develop the Zebel spell, 
indicating positive progress in the mission. Upon hearing this, Beelzebub decides to test his son by sending an assessment test through Hilda. She informs Oga and Beel that they must defeat 100 humans in the next week. Hilda explains that they will receive one point for each person defeated, and that the test is considered a failure if they score less than 30 points. She also warns Oga that he must pass the exam, otherwise, he will face a hellish punishment in a special room in the demon world with Beel. At this news, Oga reacts with great trepidation. The next day, Oga shares the situation with Furuichi and reveals that he is in serious trouble. However, the conversation is interrupted when Beel comes across a stray cat and decides to challenge it. Ogre rejoices at the opportunity as defeating 10 cats would earn Beale a point in the assessment test. However, the baby is easily defeated by the cat, resulting in a cry that electrocutes the boys. Faced with this situation, Oga comes up with the idea of leaving Beale in the care of the person who gets the best marks in the Ishiyama assessment test. In this way, he hopes to find a more qualified student than the others, who have so far been rejected by Beale. Within the school, all the students do their best to study and prepare for the test. However, both Olga and Furuichi realize that most of them lack understanding of the subjects they are studying. As the assessment test begins, Oga watches as his classmates look for ways to pass the test according to their abilities. At that moment, he realizes that the majority in his class lacks intelligence. The test is interrupted when students from the Sapon school come to Ishiyama looking for confrontation, motivated by Kanzaki's previous confrontation with them. In this situation, Oga decides to ask everyone to continue with the test while he takes care of the Sapan students in order to determine who is the smartest in Ishiyama and leave him in charge of Beel. After leaving the school Oga, with the help of Beel, activates the Zebel spell to defeat all his opponents without difficulty. This victory ensures that Oga and Beel pass the test set by Beelzebub. The next day, Oga and Furuichi can consult the results table of the assessment test in Ishiyama to identify the smartest student. However, Oga discovers that Furuichi got the highest score, which frustrates his plans, as Beel would not agree to stay with Furuichi. After this, Hilda is seen to be contemptuous of Oga and Beel as they head off to school. She then embarks on the task of getting milk from the underworld for Beel, enlisting the help of Elaine. Hilda also offers a glass of beer to Oga's father, noting that he has a very different personality from his son. However, Oga's mother appears angry to see her husband drinking so early, and Oga's father apologizes by kneeling before her to avoid trouble. Hilda is impressed by Oga's father's ability to deal with the situation. Later, she accompanies Oga's mother to the supermarket, where she begins to understand more about the human world and its inhabitants, coming to the conclusion that humans are quite self-centered. Although Hilda tries to enjoy the human television programs, the situation situation is interrupted when Beel cries again and electrocutes everyone. The next day, Hilda chooses to take the food to Oga and Beel at the school, where she meets the students defeated by Oga. At that moment, Furuichi informs her that Oga is out fighting several delinquents. Determined, Hilda gives the food to Furuichi to deliver to Oga later. Upon returning home, Hilda discovers that Oga's family has prepared a special meal for her, which fills her with joy. After a few hours, Hilda meets Oga again near the river, and he invites her to return home together. Meanwhile, Kanzaki engages in intense training in the park with the aim of getting stronger and defeating Oga. During a break, Shiro comes over and hands Kanzaki a yogurt. Learning that Kanzaki has come up with an idea to develop a new technique, Kanzaki puts forward the idea of performing a double top kick but is faced with the problem of a lack of support. Shiro is left impressed, at which point Natsu appears, revealing that he has been investigating Oga and his source of power. He shows a compilation of Oga's fights since his arrival in Ishiyama, leading Shiro to the conclusion that Oga's strength comes from Beel. Shiro proposes that Kanzaki carry a dummy on his back to simulate Beel's weight, believing this to be the secret to Oga's training. Accepting the idea, Kanzaki begins rigorous training by climbing stairs with a dummy on his back but Natsu and Shiro increase the weight to challenge him further. As they add more weight, Kanzaki is forced to stop, unable to bear the load. After a brief rest, Shiro suggests that they made a mistake by using a fake baby for training and proposes using a cat. 
However, the cat attacks Shiro and his attempts with other options, such as girls, lead to trouble with the police. Shiro finally decides to dress up as a baby to help Kanzaki, who accepts the help after brief persuasion. However, Natsu interrupts by pointing out that Beel is always naked when Oga carries him, and suggesting that Shiro do so as well. Despite Shiro's willingness, they are arrested by the police upon witnessing the scene. Faced with this failure, Kanzaki asks Shiro and Natsu to leave him alone to continue his training. In another case, Beel is feeling rather bored in Oga's room, prompting Hilda to suggest that he take him for a walk in the park. To Beel's obvious boredom, Oga agrees, thus avoiding the tears and electric shocks that might follow. As they stroll, they meet Furichi, who decides to join them in the hope of seeing attractive girls in the park. During their stay, Oga bumps into Kunieda, but being dressed differently, Neither he nor Furuichi manage to recognize her. It is then that Kunieta mentions that his younger brother Koda has gone astray, leading Oga and Furuichi to offer their help in the search. On the other hand, Kanzaki meets Koda and decides to spend some time playing with him. However, Kanzaki realizes that Koda could be the baby he needs to continue his training. He begins to strengthen his body by carrying Koda on his back noticing improvements in his reaction time and movements. During training, he watches Koda play in the grass, inspiring him to devise a new technique. At that moment, Oga, Furuichi and Kunieta appear before Kanzaki. Despite Kunieta's expectations of being recognized as part of the Tohoshinki, Kanzaki only identifies her as Koda's mother and returns the boy to her. However, Beel and Koda establish an instant rivalry by making eye contact and asking Oga and Kanzaki to fight as their representatives. Although Oga chooses not to fight, Kanzaki uses a new technique inspired by one of Koda's moves. Although the technique fails, they decide to end the fight. Kanzaki assures Oga that he will defeat him next time, receiving praise for his new technique. Later, Oga meets Natsu and Shiro, who offer him yogurt before Kanzaki leaves the park with his followers. After these events, in a different scene, Furichi chooses to take a bath at home. Suddenly, however, Elaine shows up with the intention of sharing a bath with him, which causes Furichi's irritation. Because of his uncomfortable experiences, Furichi complains to Oga the next day. He urges him to quickly find a new tutor for Beale in order to get rid of Elaine. Oga, responding, explains his efforts to do so, but points out the lack of strong individuals in Ishiyama. Furuichi then suggests that they seek out Tojo, the last member of Tohoshinki and known as the strongest student in the school. Highlighting his record of defeating dangerous students in the past, Furuichi reveals that Tojo is often absent from school, taking on odd part-time jobs to earn money. Upon this information, Oga urges Furuichi to track Tojo down. Meanwhile, the Tohoshinki members learn of Oga's intention to confront Tojo, realizing that Ishiyama will soon witness an epic fight. After a few hours, Haimkawa meets Furuichi and reveals that Tojo is working on a beach to earn money. Furuichi, excited at the prospect of seeing women in swimming costumes there, thanks Haimkawa for the valuable information. Meanwhile, Kunieta and the girls overhear the conversation, and Kunieta worries, believing that Oga might not be able to defeat Tojo no matter how strong he is. The next day, Oga, Furuichi, Hilda, and Elaine head to the beach with the aim of finding Tojo at his workplace. Furuichi, excited at the prospect of seeing Hilda in a swimming costume, is disappointed to discover that she only brings a suit for Beel. Later, Oga and Furuichi go to the food shop where Tojo is employed, but are mistaken for new part-time employees and are forced to serve a crowd of customers. Despite the situation, they decide to continue working in the hope that Tojo will return soon. Meanwhile, the other members of the Tohoshinki arrive at the beach to witness the fight between Oga and Tojo. However, the shop owner informs them that Tojo was fired from his job the day before due to an altercation with some thugs. The conversation is interrupted when the thugs defeated by Tojo reappear and cause trouble for Oga and Furuichi, thinking that they are related to Tojo. Faced with this situation, Oga decides to take on the thugs himself and easily defeats them. After this encounter, Oga leaves the shop where he was working. Meanwhile, we discover that Tojo is still working on the beach and receive news that Oga is on site, 
ready to take him on in a fight. Tojo is excited to hear the news as he has heard about Oga and his achievements in defeating three of the four Tohoshinki members. Back with Oga, we find him playing with Furuichi and he accidentally knocks over Beale's sand figure. This causes Beale to cry and electrocute Oga. At that moment, Kuniita appears and meets the boys. Furuichi is disappointed to see that Kuniita has no swimming costume, just like Hilda. At that instant, a beautiful girl approaches Furuichi and hands him a note from Heimkai with Tojo's current location. Oga and Furuichi head off to find Tojo at his new job. However, the owner reports that Tojo's shift is over and he has left. Furuichi suggests that Ogre write a letter of challenge to send to Tojo to locate him more quickly. Oga agrees and decides to write the letter to give to Kunieda, as she knows Tojo's face, unlike Oga and Furuichi. Kunieda is excited to think that Oga will make a confession of love to her, but he immediately clarifies that the letter is for Tojo, leaving her disappointed. After this, Kanzaki and Haimkawa urge Kunieda to hurry and deliver the letter to Tojo. Despite this, Kunieda refuses, worried that Oga may be seriously injured. As she is about to tear up the letter, a follower of Tojo's appears and realizes that it is an invitation from Oga. The letter reaches Tojo, who decides to wait for Oga at the appointed place. Meanwhile, Oga heads towards Tojo, but is stopped by Miwa and the MK5. They propose to ally with Oga and his group to defeat Tojo together, to which Ogre refuses and opts to take them all on by himself. However, Beale falls to the ground, starts crying and hurts Oga. In the meantime, several gangs in the area gather with the intention of ambushing Tojo, who decides to confront them all at once. After several hours, Oga arrives at the agreed location to meet Tojo, only to find that Tojo is no longer present. Kunieta appears and informs him that Tojo defeated several gangs before deciding to withdraw when he realized that Oga would not show up. He also mentions to Oga that Tojo is not someone he can beat. However, these words only increase Oga's excitement to meet Ishiyama's strongest student. After this, Beelzebub is seen to have assigned summer chores for Beel to complete. Oga bristles at the idea that a child should be doing chores during the holidays. However, Beel unwraps the packages sent by Beelzebub, revealing demonic accessories for the baby to use. Despite Oga's resistance, he decides to call Elaine to use his portal to return the accessories to the demon world. Hilda explains to him that it is impossible to get rid of the props, and they must fulfill the tasks assigned to them. Beale is forced to use the first object, a notebook called Thrilling Notebook. By drawing a little cat on it, the drawing comes to life. The boys decide to try out the notebook to bring their own drawings to life. Then, they are forced to use the second object, a collection kit. Since there are no demonic creatures in the human world, Hilda suggests hunting down delinquents in Ishiyama, as many of them attend school and have nothing to do during the holidays. So, upon arriving in Ishiyama, Oga starts hunting down all the school bullies using the demonic tools. During the search, Oga decides to follow Kunieta with the aim of capturing her, which causes her to blush as she again misunderstands his intentions. However, Kunieta manages to deftly dodge each of Oga's attacks and avoid capture. After this, the group noticed that the school was sprouting several demonic plants, which were planted by Beale, constituting the third and final accessory sent by Beelzebub. Among the plants that grew, they noticed a particularly violent and carnivorous one. This plant began to catch most of the bullies present in the school, growing even larger as it caught more individuals. Faced with this situation, Oga decided to confront the plant, but quickly realized that his blows did no harm. At this point, Hilda mentioned that she had brought several accessories, including a spear that could be used to defeat the plant. Oga and the members of the Tohoshinki began searching for the spear among the props, but the carnivorous plant dragged them away one by one. At this point, the cat created by Beal chose to sacrifice itself, providing the boys with time to find the accessory, being eaten by the plant in the process. This act provoked Beale's wrath. Oga and Beale activated their demonic power to confront the plant, managing to defeat it in a single blow and saving everyone. However, the excessive use of energy left Oga and Beale unconscious on the ground. After that, Oga began to experience an intense heat inside his house. The cause of this heat turned out to be Beale, 
who was ill with a pronounced fever. Oga's sister decided to inflate a small pool to bathe Beale in an attempt to alleviate his discomfort. However, Beale's condition did not improve, and the water began to evaporate. Over time, Beale's condition worsened, causing concern for both Oga and Hilda. After a while, Hilda noticed that Oga's Zebel spell disappeared and Beal fell unconscious. At that moment, she realized that the bond between Oga and Beal had been broken, which meant that the baby would not be able to release its magical power. Oga, on the other hand, was thrilled to realize that he no longer needed to be Beal's foster father. Upon hearing this, Hilda became angry with Oga and expelled him from the house, as she did not want to see him. Oga was forced to walk down the street at night, determined not to worry about Beale, as, being a demon, he would probably be fine. However, his walk was interrupted by Shoji, one of Tojo's followers, who gave Oga a powerful kick. The two began to fight, and Shoji proved to be superior to Oga. Despite this, Shoji was forced to end the fight when he received a call from Tojo, and decided to say goodbye to Oga. After these events, Ogre returned home and noticed Hilda's absence. He decided to take care of Beale. However, the next day, he noticed that Beale was no longer in her room. At one point, she expressed her joy to Furuichi that she no longer had to worry about taking care of a baby. However, Oga's sister intervened and forced him to return to Hilda and Beale. Oga, feeling upset, decided to go to the river, the place where he met Beale and Elaine. There he met Tojo, who was together with Beale. Upset by this situation, Oga decided to leave, but Furuichi stopped him and asked Tojo where he had found the baby. Tojo replied that he would only tell him if Oga defeated him in a fight. Oga accepted the challenge and confronted Tojo. In the fight, Tojo sent Oga flying with a single blow, causing Shoji to believe that the fight was over. However, Oga got up and counterattacked, surprising Tojo, who decided to continue the fight. During that confrontation, Oga tore part of Tojo's shirt and discovered a zebel spell on his shoulder, leaving Oga and Furuichi which he astonished. Despite this, Tojo decided to end the fight by sending Oga flying with a powerful punch. After this, Tojo withdrew, taking Beal with him. After his defeat, Ogre returned home, where he was greeted by Hilda. She introduced him to Dr. Prenius Fercus and his assistant Lamia, who came from the underworld to treat Beal and cure him. Fercus explained that Beal was suffering from royal fever a disease that manifests itself when one possesses great power. He mentioned that the bond between Oga and Beale was unconsciously severed to avoid endangering Oga, as controlling Beale's immense power could lead to Oga's death, as he was not strong enough. Lamia blamed Oga for Beale's condition, arguing that he did not grow fast enough to match the baby's strength. Oga began to believe that Beale sought a new, stronger father like Tojo, but Hilda dismissed this idea. She explained that if Beale had chosen Tojo as his new foster father, he would have released his power by now, and the fever would have disappeared. Hilda encouraged Oga not to give up and to become stronger in order to be accepted by Beale again and settle the score with Tojo. Lamia intervened using a special gun that sent Oga to a world inside his mind by means of a spirit bullet. In this dream world, Oga would have the chance to regain his bond with Beale, but he would also face the risk of being lost and dying if he failed in his mission. Inside his own mind, Oga observes the people he meets differently and realizes that he must find Beal in this surreal world, following the advice of the Furuichi of his inner world. He progresses through his inner world, meeting various people from his academy. After six hours, Lamia begins to think that Oga has failed in his attempt to reconnect with Beale. However, at that moment, Oga wakes up and annoys Lamia for thinking he would fail. Hilda congratulates Oga on passing the test and mentions to him that he must now get Beale back. With determination, Oga prepares for his rematch against Tojo. After a while, Oga decides to take a bath, but his moment is interrupted by Shiro. She informs him that Kanzaki and Haimkawa have decided to take on Tojo, as the balance of power in Ishiyama crumbled after Oga defeated the three Tohoshinki. All the thugs rallied behind Tojo, seeing him as the only one capable of defeating Oga, resulting in Kanzaki and Haimkawa losing their followers. Kaoru, a subordinate of Tojo, easily took care of them, 
leading Kanzaki and Hankawa to send Shiro with Oga to form an alliance and confront Tojo. Although Oga is not interested in the alliance and prefers to seek his revenge alone, he is forced to join Kanzaki and Hankawa in tracking down Tojo. Together, they find Shoji and interrogate him to obtain Tojo's location. However, several of Ishiyama's students appear, wishing to join Tojo as followers. Shoji retreats to join Tojo, leaving Oga and the others to confront the thugs. Despite the opposition, they manage to defeat the bullies with ease and continue to advance towards the school. Arriving at the school, they are greeted by Ishiyama's students, who wish to prove their loyalty to Tojo and are ready to confront anyone who opposes him. The boys find themselves in dire straits in the face of this new threat. However, Kuniida and the other Red Tails show up to help, defeating several thugs and offering their support to Oga and the others. At this point, Kuniida uses a special technique to break through to Oga. In another instance, Tojo is at the back of the school, setting off fireworks to cheer Beel up. However, Oga makes his appearance again. At this, Tojo challenges Oga to a duel to win Beel back, in the hope that Oga will fight for real. Oga, for his part, points out that the decision to return to him rests with Beel. At that point, Beel recovers from the fever and comes to her senses, indicating that Oga has succeeded in the test to restore the bond. Oga found Beel in his inner world and helped him with his baby antics. With Beel back, Oga prepares to face Tojo again in combat. Elsewhere, Furuichi is enjoying a peaceful sleep in his room, but his rest is interrupted by Elaine. Elaine wakes him up and urges him to get ready to support his friend. Elaine dresses Furuichi and teleports him to Ishiyama, where he joins Hilda, Furcus and Lamia, who observe the impending fight between Oga and Tojo. Meanwhile, Shoji and Kaoru decide to stop Kanzaki and Haimkawa as they plan for Oga to weaken Tojo enough for them to defeat him. A two-on-two -two fight breaks out on the school grounds. Back to Oga, he decides to leave Beel out of the fight and asks him not to get involved, as it is his own fight. Beel agrees and chooses to watch. The fight between Oga and Tojo begins, and Oga uses a rear kick to take advantage. Despite connecting with several punches, Tojo holds his own. On another front, Shoji and Kaoru brutally beat Kanzaki and Haimkawa, urging them to surrender. Despite the odds, the two get up again. At that moment, Natsu intervenes and defeats Kaoru easily, offering his help to the boys. In parallel, Lamia notices a firework from Tojo that hasn't exploded and is curious about it. Meanwhile, Oga takes a beating from Tojo, but doesn't give up and manages to land a powerful blow using the activated Zebel spell. Lamia accidentally ignites the firework, which heads straight for Oga. He easily stops the project with his demonic power, scolding Beel for getting involved in the fight and underestimating his ability. Beel, trusting Oga, deactivates his powers, and the fight continues. The battle comes to an end when Oga finds an opening in Tojo's defense and forcefully throws him to the ground. Oga proclaims himself Ishiyama's strongest student. Furichi asks Tojo about the Zebol spell mark on his shoulder, and Tojo reveals that it's just a tattoo inspired by someone he admired. The boys realize that there are others with demonic contracts besides Oga. After the conflict, Beel, excited by the fight, injects a large amount of magical power into Oga's arm, who is forced to release the power in order not to die, destroying the Ishiyama school in the process. After the destruction caused by Oga, Kanzaki, Haimkawa, Shoji and Kaoru are sent to the hospital and learn that Tojo helped them escape despite being more injured than them. This revelation surprises the boys, who did not expect Tojo's benevolence. Meanwhile, Ogre receives a lecture from Furuichi to destroy the school, but ignores it when he notices that Beel is afraid of a small cicada. Determined to overcome this fear, Oga prepares a special training for Beel and the insects. Cunietta, on the other hand, embarks on a journey to the Maputatsu Mountains with his grandfather. He is heading to the top to deliver an important package to the head priest of a temple. However, he gets separated from Cunietta and encounters three thugs capturing insects on the mountain. He advises them to stop, but the thugs ignore him. Meanwhile, Cunietta ascends the mountain with Koda, but his thoughts are interrupted when he observes Oga training Beel to overcome his fear of insects. 
Ogre runs into Cuneata again and recognizes her as the girl from the park. They decide to share ice cream, but Cuneata's grandfather shows up and finds out that Oga is training. They decide to have a training fight in which the grandfather proves to be superior to Oga. Although Oga fights seriously, Grandpa uses a special technique from his family to defeat him. However, he realizes that his package has been stolen by the thugs and decides to get it back. The thugs set a trap, but Oga appears, defeats them and retrieves the package, earning the chance to have a rematch with Cuneata's grandfather. The grandfather gives his blessing to Oga as his granddaughter's future husband, leaving Oga confused by this unexpected declaration. After the trip to the mountains, Ogre returns home and learns that it is time for Furcus and Lamia to return to the demon world. Everyone asks Furuichi to call Elaine, even though he wishes otherwise. Elaine splits to allow Furcus and Lamia to return, but Beale hugs Lamia's leg. Oga and Furwitch's attempts to separate Beale result in them, all being sent to the demon world, where they discover they are in Vlad's dangerous lair. In the demon world, Lamia mentions that Furcus was able to reach Beelzebub's area, but they are in Vlad's lair. She finds Elaine, severely injured for having transported more people than he could. Elaine attempts a dramatic farewell, but Oga does not allow it as he does not wish to stay in the demon world. Hilda contacts the boys and asks them to seek out Elaine's daughter, Angelica, for help. A wild Aku beast appears, but Beale reveals that its powers are greater in the demon world and defeats the beast with a lightning bolt. Continuing towards Angelica's house, they are stopped by a tree demon that forces Furuichi to eat its fruits. Oga defeats it with a kick, but a plant captures Furuichi, making it smell horrible. After traveling for a while, they find Angelica's house and decide to enter. They discover that she has been captured by hunters who consider her a prized species. Furichi finds a photo of Elaine with his daughter and decides to rescue her with determination. Two hunters try to capture the boys as merchandise, but Olga defeats them and interrogates them to find out where Elaine's daughter is. After arriving in the main city of Vlad's lair, the boys discover that Angelica is in the highest tower. Meanwhile, Angelica Angelica, sad on her birthday, receives encouragement from Furuichi, who has come to her rescue with the rest of the group. Despite her situation, Angelica is happy to recognize Furuichi thanks to the stories of her father, Elaine. She warns of a great, imminent danger to the city. The guardian of Vlad's territory appears angry due to the damage caused by the hunters capturing creatures. Furuichi is trapped in the window while the others try to deal with the guardian. The hunters surround the boys, but Beale grows up at the sight of the guardian, accidentally freeing Furuichi. Beale turns into Oga's giant robot to confront the guardian, surprising Furuichi and Lamia. After an intense fight, Beale defeats the guardian, and everyone celebrates. Furuichi decides to confront the leader of the hunters to free Angelica, but is frightened by the sight of a knife. Beale accidentally crushes the hunter leader, looking cool about the situation. Beale begins to lose control, wreaking havoc in the city. Oga tells him it's time to eat, and Beale returns to normal, ending the conflict. Elaine appears and reveals that he was at a health resort in the demon world. He splits in two to transfer Oga and Furuichi back to the human world where they are greeted by Hilda with joy. After several days, Furuichi rushes to Oga's house with news. When he arrives, he finds Oga and Beale sleeping. They wake up to learn that a new semester is starting at St. Ishiyama Academy, which happens to be the new school for Ishiyama students after the destruction of the old one. Furuichi explains that they are away from the delinquents of Ishiyama and excited, he expects a different educational experience. At the new school, Furuichi tries to act nice to normal girls but she mistakes him for a bully. Ishiyama's students, grouped in a special class, encount dangerous students. Furuichi notices the mix of students from different years and the tension in the classroom. He decides to communicate through Beal to avoid conflict. While Oga is still sleeping, Kunieta begins to feel sympathy for him. Professor Sadohara, in charge of Ishiyama's class, threatens the students to gain respect. He challenges Tojo to an arm wrestling match, but Tojo easily defeats him. Sadohara tries to threaten Oga, but Beale intervenes and electrocutes them both, causing chaos in the classroom. Elsewhere, Kazu, a boy who admired Ishiyama's delinquents, hopes to meet Oga. Accompanied by his friend Azusa, 
he decides to become a delinquent. They observe Kanzaki and Haimkawa with great murderous aura, and Kazu looks for Oga to check his strength. They find Oga surrounded by thugs, but are shocked to witness his ability. The thugs capture Kazu and Azusa, but are saved by Kinieta. Oga defeats the bullies and Kazu, impressed, asks Oga to accept him as his adopted younger brother to learn more from him. The next day, Kazu practices his delinquent look in front of a mirror in order to look cool. Afterward, they decide to visit Oga's house to go to school together. On arrival, he meets Hilda and is struck by the beauty of his superior's wife. When Oga shows up, Kazu expresses his admiration and asks to accompany him to St. Ishiyama Academy, despite Oga's constant refusal about the sibling relationship in crime. Although initially reluctant, Oga accepts Kazu's company due to his flattery and admiration. Kazu praises Oga and expresses his admiration, which leads Oga to allow him to accompany them with Furuichi. Kazu notices Oga's acceptance and realizes that Furuichi is Oga's faithful companion. Motivated by his admiration for Oga, Kazu sets out to learn from him, recognizing that he will not become stronger just by being his adopted brother. He decides to visit Oga's salon to imitate his actions and become as strong as him. However, Kunieta informs Oga and Kazu that they have been summoned by the academy counselor due to the conflict with the bullies. Although he warns them about keeping order, Oga delegates the responsibility to Kunieta and leaves. Kazu and Azusa thank Kunieta and introduce themselves as childhood friends. Kunieta takes the opportunity to talk to Azusa alone and get advice on how to approach a boy, especially Oga. In another scenario, Kazu visits Oga's house to help with the chores, meeting Oga's family despite Oga's attempts to ask him to leave. The next day, over lunch, Kazu asks Oga to train him to become as strong as him and learn the electric technique used earlier. Oga agrees and arranges a training training session. As Beale begins to feel hungry, Oga has Furuichi carry Beale and perform a special pose, electrocuting him and making Kazu believe he has mastered an electric technique. At the same time, Azusa is visited by a huge man who takes her to a temple, where she is observed by other students who inform Kazu. Kazu decides to go to save her friend without involving Oga, but Oga and Furuichi decide to follow him. Arriving at the temple, Kazu confronts the big man to save Azusa, but Kunieta appears and reveals that they are at his house and that the man is an acquaintance of his grandfather, thus clearing up the misunderstanding. After receiving the news from Elaine, Furuichi is excited to learn that Angelica plans to celebrate her birthday in the human world. He imagines spending time together and decides to wait for her in a suit near the river where Elaine first appeared. However, he discovers that Angelica has arrived by train. The boys organize a special gathering in the courtyard of Furwich's house to welcome Angelica. During the celebration Angelica, from the world of demons with gifts, mentions that she has brought gifts for everyone. You decide to take the gifts behind the house to keep the identity of the demons a secret, but a failed transfer releases a demonic beast named Yapal into the human world. Elaine is severely injured by the failed transfer and must rest, while Angelica decides to confront the Yapal with a magic wand Elaine had given her. To unleash her full power, she needs four more allies, leaving Hilda and Azusa to transform into the magic girls. The women in Furich's family try to help, but the want doesn't work on them, as to be magic girls, they must be 18 or younger. Furichi convinces her younger sister to join the group, and Kazu suggests Kunieta as the fifth member. The boys search the city for Yapal and find him at a festival with an anime play. However, thugs defeated by Kunieta in the past show up to ruin the play and seek revenge. The boys fight the criminals while Angelica chases after the Yapal. Furichi sacrifices himself by catching the Yapal and preventing it from escaping to the demon world. That night, Furuichi returns home with the help of Elaine. Days later, Sadohara summons Kunieta and Oga to assign them the responsibility of conducting physical examinations of the members of his class with the aim of obtaining accurate measurements. Sadohara, despising Ishiyama's bullies, asks them to conduct the exams in a room near the teacher's office, hoping that they will make a mistake so that he will have an excuse to expel them. Kunieta, in charge of organizing the Red Tails girls, instructs them to prepare the room while the rioting boys are gathered in the academy courtyard. 
Meanwhile, Oga entertains Beal by having him fight a Tojo-inspired stuffed animal to eliminate boredom. Beal uses a move similar to the one Oga used against Tojo, concluding the fight and filling Oga with pride. The arrival of the girls in the hall interrupts the boys' game. At the boys' insistence, the girls measure and weigh the boys, but a problem arises when they try to measure Haimkawa because of his long hair. Haimkawa gets frustrated, but Kuniita stops him to avoid trouble as the teacher's office is nearby. Kuniita asks Oga and Furuichi to leave after their physical examination to make way for the girls. Furuichi offers to help but receives a blow from Nin. During the exam, Oga tries to get Beal out of a locker he locked himself in after believing Oga had replaced him with a stuffed animal. While the boys make noise, the girls finish their applications and leave the room as it was. Kuniita, discovering that the boys were hiding the whole time, becomes enraged and smashes a table with his hand. Sadohara, hearing the noise, heads for the hall. Sadohara, angry, questions Kuniita about the noise and the broken table. Kuniita, to retaliate, breaks another table to make him think they are in disrepair. Kuniita hands the exam papers to Sadohara and prepares to punish the boys. Oga notices Beale's absence and decides to go looking for him, while Furuichi tries to escape, but is stopped by Kunieta. In the car park, Beale gets into Sadohara's new car, and Oga tries to open it. Beale, noticing that Oga doesn't have the stuffed animal, tries to get out, but the door is locked. Sadohara, enraged, watches as Beale urinates into the car, flooding it. Unable to open the door, Oga decides to smash the car with a single blow, further enraging Sadohara. Oga asks Sadohara not to worry, as he will break his car cleanly. By destroying the vehicle, Beale is released, and they both return home. Despite Sadohara's threats, the principal is unable to expel Oga due to the incredible feat of destroying a car in one blow, leaving Sadohara unable to take revenge. After this incident, Beale cries again in Oga's room due to a nightmare. Hilda tries to calm him down, but an annoying insect causes Beale to cry again, forcing Oga and Hilda to resist another electric shock. Later, Oga meets Furuichi and expresses the need to leave Beal with someone stronger and smarter. Furuichi questions whether there is anyone stronger than Oga at St. Ishiyama Academy. Upon entering the classroom, they notice more students absent than usual, and Oga assumes that they are simply skipping classes. However, Haimkawa reports that the MK5 and Goodnight were defeated by a group known as the Six Holy Knights, whose goal is to expel the students from Ishiyama. Haimkawa explains that these knights are skilled and are meant to reinforce the school's traditions and public morals. The counselor interrupts the conversation and calls Oga and Kunieta to his office. There, he scolds the boys for causing trouble and mentions the students' complaints about seeing Oga with a naked baby at the academy. He demands that Oga dress Beale, calculating on a false ruler. He then warns about the six holy knights, noting their ability to control delinquents. Despite the warning, Oga is excited to meet the holy knights. After the meeting, Kunieta wonders who these respected students really are. Oga suggests that Kazu might have information and decide to go see him. Meanwhile, Furuichi meets an old friend named Miki, who warns him about the Six Holy Knights. Oga and Kunieta arrive at Kazu's salon, where they meet Azusa. When they ask about the Holy Knights, Kazu is absent, but two of them appear, Alex and Sakaki. Alex, captain of the boxing club, and Sakaki of the kendo club, reveal their membership in the Six Holy Knights. Despite Kunieta's warning to avoid confrontation, Alex attacks Oga who tries to assess the strength and intelligence of the knights. Kunieta stops Sakaki with a borrowed ruler, surprising everyone. Despite Oga's resistance, Alex retreats, acknowledging that they underestimated Ishiyama's delinquents. After learning of the existence of the six holy knights from Beale and Oga, Hilda also becomes interested in them. Although Kazu does not give Oga any more information for fear of reprisals, Furuichi arrives to explain how to identify a member of the Holy Knights through the emblems. He mentions Mickey, but Oga does not remember him. At school, the boys spy on the students from the rooftop, looking for emblems. Azusa reveals that she has an emblem on her neck, which arouses suspicion. Beale offers to investigate, and Oga asks Azusa to hold it, making Kunieta jealous. When they reveal that they are investigating the Holy Knights, Beale tries to tear the emblem off Azusa, 
who confides that she got it for free from a magazine. Nin informs the boys that Kanzaki is in trouble. In the classroom, they discover that students from St. Ishiyama joined Kunieta's followers. Shiro intervenes, and the students throw a weight that sends him to the hospital. Kanzaki seeks revenge, but Miki stops him with Chinese martial arts skills. Although Miki is happy to see Oga, Oga does not recognize him and retreats with the boys. Mickey informs them that the Holy Knights will be waiting for them on the roof of the old building after school. Oga decides to go alone and meets Mickey, Alex, Sakaki and Go, another member of the Holy Knights. Kunieta, Haimkawa and Natsu appear, while Furuichi, Kazu and Azusa watch from afar. He tries to attack Oga, but Natsu stops him. Sakaki seeks revenge against Kunieta, but Haimkawa intervenes. Alex prepares to take on Oga, but Oga defeats him with a single blow. Miki decides to take on Oga in earnest, leaving Beal with Kunieta. We go back to the past, where Miki was constantly bullied at school until Oga intervened to protect him. This action generated admiration in Miki and the two became friends until a tragic event occurred. In the present, Miki uses a powerful Chinese technique to defeat Oga. Kunieta notices that Natsu and Haimkawa are also in trouble fighting the Holy Knights. Kanzaki intervenes and attacks Miki by surprise, sending him to the ground, expressing his desire for revenge and reviving the will of the others. Oga stops Kanzaki with a powerful blow to continue his fight against Miki. Although those present believe that Oga knocked Kanzaki out for his own good, Oga reveals that he did so because he wanted to face Miki alone and considered Kanzaki a nuisance. Oga attacks Miki, who dodges his blows easily. Miki decides to stop playing and uses a special attack to end the confrontation. However, Nanami, a member of the Holy Knights, stops him telling him that his technique is forbidden. At that moment Izuma, the leader of the Holy Knights and Miki's teacher, appears. The sky darkens with the arrival of Izuma, the most powerful member of the Holy Knights. Kunieta worries as he senses his powerful presence. Tojo appears and expresses his desire to join the fight. Izuma reveals that he has come to stop the confrontation. Tojo tries to attack him, but Izuma easily stops him. Miki, annoyed with Tojo, hits him with his technique, but Tojo is unharmed. Izuma decides to end the conflict and asks the Holy Knights to withdraw. After the confrontation, the boys, including Oga, Furuichi, Kunieta, Kanzaki, Haimkawa, Natsu and Tojo are expelled for causing trouble. The boys decide to complain to the counselor, who offers them a chance to redeem themselves. He proposes that they take on the Holy Knights in a sporting event at the school festival. If they win, they will not be expelled and the Holy Knights will lose their authority. The boys accept the challenge. After the meeting, the boys return to their classroom, where Sadohara informs them of the arrival of a new classmate Hilda. The revelation surprises everyone. Hilda reveals to Oga that she posed as his cousin and exchange student. She also mentions that Elaine has also infiltrated the school. The conversation is interrupted by Cunieta's female followers, who announce that they have decided that the sport to play against the gentlemen will be volleyball, leaving the boys astonished. After school, Cunieta books the gym to practice with the boys. However, only Oga and Furuichi show up, as the rest show no interest. Hilda joins in and offers to motivate the boys. In the evening, Elaine captures the boys and takes them to a special room, where they are greeted by Hilda. She shows them a recording of Elaine disguised as Mr. Volleyball, but the boys are not fooled and recognize his true identity. Elaine shows a video of the Knights defeating a college team and, together with Hilda, modifies it to motivate the boys. Although Furuichi doubts the credibility of the recording, he notices that the boys have fallen for the lie and are motivated to beat the Knights. The next day, the boys go to the gym to train, surprising Kunieta. During the training, Haimkawa has problems with his hairstyle and Kunieta's subordinates decide to give him a makeover so that he will go unnoticed. Furuichi suggests that the boys choose the team's libero and Hilda, with her powerful serve, challenges Kunieta. After a demonstration of skill, Kunieta manages to stop one of the servers, earning her the position of libero and being named captain by Hilda. After this, the boys continue their training at the gym. Oga decides to talk to Furuichi alone to question why he is practicing volleyball instead of fighting Miki. Furuichi explains that he is doing it to avoid being expelled, which frustrates Oga, who only wants to fight. The conversation is interrupted when they hear a loud bang coming from a nearby dojo, 
caused by Mickey training with sandbags shredded by the force of his blows. Oga and Furuichi decide to visit Mickey, who provides them with karate clothing to simulate training while they spar. Before they begin, Mickey shares with Oga his past, revealing that he was moving to Nara with his mother. He recalls how he was ambushed by a gang led by Kiriya, who stole a special amulet from him. Oga intervened to help Mickey, but after the victory, Oga beat him several times and confronted him again when Kiriya and his gang sought revenge at the school. In the present, the fight between Oga and Mickey begins, and Mickey takes the upper hand. Despite not having mastered his most powerful technique, he decides to use it against Oga, resulting in the latter's complete complete defeat. Mickey announces that they will fight again after the volleyball match and hopes to have perfected his technique by then. After the defeat, Oga challenges Tojo to a fight to understand how he was able to withstand Mickey's attack. Beale declares the fight a draw, and Oga thanks Tojo for helping him understand that his special move is his own fighting spirit. Both Tojo and Furuichi are happy to see that Oga has regained his will to fight and not give up. After several days, the day of the school festival arrives, and the kids start to enjoy themselves and have fun. Furuichi decides to visit a maid cafe before the match and meets Azusa, who mentions that her cafe hasn't had many customers for some reason. Kazu informs Azusa that the Holy Knights have opened a cafe, which explains the lack of customers at Azusa's cafe. Furuichi, analyzing the situation, notices flaws in the shop and decides to help Azusa improve it to compete with the Holy Knights. Furuichi begins to teach Azusa and her companions how to greet and welcome customers. Elaine, dressed as a maid, joins in to explain the mistakes better. Cunietta interrupts, annoyed with Furuichi for wasting time instead of being at the pre-match meeting. Furuichi tricks Cunietta into dressing up as a maid to help Azusa arguing that he is already facing the Holy Knights before the game. Meanwhile, Oga visits the food tents at the festival and meets Tojo, who works in one of them. Oga decides to eat there while Tojo prepares food at high speed. Kunita's subordinates are surprised to see their leader dressed as a maid, and Furuichi takes advantage of the situation to have them join Azusa's shop, scaring the customers with their personalities. Hilda shows up at the shop to try a dessert, and Furuichi asks the girls for help. Hilda agrees to show them how to be good servants. Thugs show up to cause trouble, but Hilda and the girls defeat them, forcing them to escape. The boys stop the thugs who try to call for reinforcements, but discover that the Holy Knights have already defeated their reinforcements and inform them that it is time for the volleyball match. Both teams meet in the gymnasium, where the students watch the match and support the Holy Knights. The referee questions whether Oga plans to play with a baby on his back to which Ogre replies yes, considering that it is not against the rules. Everyone allows Oga and Beale to be considered as one player. The match starts with a powerful serve by Alex, stopped by Cunietta, allowing Heimkawa to attack. However, Izuma easily blocks the shot, giving the Knights the first point. Oga and Tojo try a strategy where they hold and throw the ball hard, but the referee calls it a foul, surprising the boys. Cunietta reprimands them that they are not playing basketball. As the Holy Knights take the lead due to mistakes by the boys, Haimkawa calls a timeout to discuss strategy. The boys return to the game more motivated, unnerving the Knights. Nanami serves, Cunietta receives his attack, and the boys make a combined attack. Oga uses Beal as a decoy to confuse the opponents and allow Haimkawa to score a point. The knights complain, but Haimkawa remembers that they accepted Oga and Beal as one player. The delinquent team uses Beal to their advantage to score points, but Izuma decides to play seriously and easily scores a point with his serve. Kunieta is stunned that she can't follow the ball. Furuichi replaces Kunieta, whose arms are injured after trying to stop Izuma's serves. The boys face a disadvantage without their sweeper and captain. Kunieta, realizing that he doesn't want the class to end with an expulsion, returns to the court and motivates the team to win together. Izuma hits her powerful serve, but Kunieta stops it, thinking it is no match for Hilda's serves. Oga hits a powerful smash, and they score another point in the match. The delinquents improve as a team, and the crowd begins to support them. After a hard-fought match, Oga scores the deciding point, 
avoiding an expulsion. Izuma congratulates them, but the meeting is interrupted when Kiriya appears in the gym, seeking revenge. Izuma tries to restrain Kiriya and asks him to leave, but Kiriya reveals that his subordinates are holding the students hostage in the gymnasium. Neither Izuma nor the Holy Knights can use their strength against Kiriya because of this threat. Kiriya announces his intention to have Oga expelled from Saint Ishiyama, beating him to provoke a fight and carry out his plan. Kunieta tries to attack Kiriya, but Natsu stops her, reminding her not to make vain of Oga and the others' efforts to avoid fighting. Miki appears to help Oga, pushing Kiriya away and revealing that he too moved to Nara years ago. Miki realizes that Oga pulled him away from the trouble with Kiriya to protect him in Nara revealing that Oga was always looking out for him. Teimo's shadow group appears, revealing that they work for Kiria. Oga saves Miki, and together they confront the minions. Kiria decides to use the hostages, but the Holy Knights and Ishiyama's criminals take care of Kiria's minions. Oga unleashes his demonic power, using a special technique that inflicts damage on Kiria and Teimo's shadows without attacking directly to avoid killing them. Kiriya, frightened, escapes with his subordinates to avoid being killed by Oga. The audience is confused by what has happened and the strange mark on Oga's body. Izuma announces that it was a play with special effects to applause. He then asks Oga not to show his demonic powers in public, surprising Oga that Izuma is aware of them. After the festival, Oga meets Hilda and Elaine on the roof of the school, informing them that Izuma is aware of the demons and their powers. The next day, Ogre returns to school, while Kunita looks on skeptically, not believing that Oga's skills were the product of special effects. Kunita's female followers misinterpret the situation, thinking that Kunita is planning to declare his love for Oga, which makes her nervous. Oga, meanwhile, questions Izuma's identity while Beale continues to sing. Biel becomes popular with the girls, making Oga uncomfortable, and Furuichi takes the opportunity to stand out. Girls ask Oga to demonstrate the special effects at school, generating excitement. Oga, unable to do tricks, hits Furuichi to surprise the audience. Kunita watches Izuma from afar and seeks answers about what happened in the gymnasium. Izuma explains that it was all a play. Kunita's female followers confirm their suspicions, but Izuma leaves when the conversation is interrupted. Tojo calls Izuma to finish their fight. Oga also joins in, but Sayatome appears and defeats all three with a single blow. Sayatome becomes Ishiyama's new teacher. He disrespects Kunita, stops his female followers easily, and presents himself as a peculiar teacher. Kunita talks to Sayatome about Oga and Tojo, but he deflects the conversation by asking her if she is in love with Oga. After a few hours, Oga wakes up after being defeated by Sayatome, who brought him and Tojo to class. Oga discovers that Sayatome is his new teacher. Tojo meets Nanami, revealing that they are childhood friends. Sayatome is the figure Tojo looked up to and was inspired to tattoo the Zebul spell. Kunita investigates the gym and discovers that marks from Oga's technique persist on the floor, suggesting that Izuma lied about the special effects. Meanwhile, Sayatome detects a dimensional hole in the gym's ceiling and seals it using his demonic power. Hilda appears and fights Sayatome, but he captures her with his Zebul spell. Sayatome warns Hilda that Oga and Beale must become stronger soon or they will die. Sayatome meets Oga, who seeks him out to ask who he really is. Sayatome claims to be just his teacher and tells Oga that he must attend classes. Oga tries to continue the conversation, but Sayatome mysteriously disappears. The next day, Sayatome starts the class by reading a poem, but Furuichi interrupts him by pointing out that he is teaching the wrong class. Sayatome apologizes and asks Oga to translate a text, which angers Oga, who, despite his resistance, is forced to comply with his new teacher's request. After class, Oga and Furuichi prepare to leave the academy. However, Furuichi realizes that he forgot his mobile phone and asks Oga to wait for him while he looks for it. While looking for his mobile phone, Kunieta appears in front of Oga to ask him a question. Question. In private, Kunieta asks Oga about Beale's true identity. Oga tries to remember Beale's full name but fails to do so. Meanwhile, Furichi observes Oga and Kunieta's meeting, initially thinking that it is a confession. However, upon overhearing the conversation, 
he realizes that Kunieda is suspicious of Oga and Beal. Oga decides to ask Beal to tell Kunieda his full name, but Beal cannot remember it. Furichi, unable to remember the name, joins Oga to resolve the situation. Kunieda, confused, watches the scene, while Beal, saddened, tries to escape. Beal is stopped by a servant girl named Yolda, who mentions Beal's full name without a problem. Furuichi, mistaking her for Hilda, incurs the wrath of Yolda, who knocks him unconscious. Yolda approaches Oga and asks him if he would be willing to die to do her a great favor. Hilda intervenes, revealing that Yolda is her older sister and asks Oga to escape with Beal. Yolda prepares to fight Hilda, but is stopped by two other maidservants, Satra and Isabella. N. A boy appears and reveals himself to be Beal's older brother and the master of Yolda, Isabella and Satra, then summons a throne and sits down to be waited on by his maidservants, infuriating Oga. Kunieta intervenes and asks Oga what is going on. Oga reveals that all the people in front of them are demons, leaving Kunieta astonished, and begins to think that Oga is in love with Kunieta, but Yolda claims that it is Kunieta who is in love with Oga. Kunieta tries to deny it, but Yolda knocks her unconscious so as not to involve her further. Oga asks N why he has come to the human world, and N reveals that he was sent by Beelzebub to destroy humanity, and proposes to work together with them, as Beel has been dragging his feet in fulfilling his mission. N plans to destroy humanity and asks for the cooperation of Oga and the others. Beel rejects the proposal by throwing ice cubes at N, who is saddened. The maids try to calm N down to prevent him from turning the area into a sea of fire. Oga decides to take N and the others to Furwich's room to prevent damage to his house. N reveals that he was sent on Beelzebub's orders because Beel has taken too long to complete his mission. N plans to work together with them to destroy humanity, but is excited to discover video games thanks to Furuichi. Beel and N play a video game, and Beel easily defeats N. Although the boys fear that N will cry, they manage to calm him down by inviting him to play video games. N is happy to have come to the world of humans to learn about video games and decides to postpone the destruction of humanity so that he can enjoy them more. And after these events, Oga, Hilda, and Cunietta return to their respective homes. Oga senses the tension in the air as Hilda and Cunietta have remained silent since they left Furwich's house. Cunietta decides to break the silence silence and tells Oga that she would prefer to go home alone from now on. She says goodbye to the boys and Oga begins to wonder what is happening to Kunieta. Hilda answers Oga's question, pointing out that few people would accept the existence of demons as easily as they do. The next day, N goes to a play center, where she tries out various human games with her maids. Satura informs him about an amazing amusement park, generating excitement in N. Meanwhile, Neen and the others notice that Kunieta is behaving stranger than usual. They assume that Kunieta has confessed and Oga has rejected her. Neen looks at Oga, upset that she has rejected their leader. Kazu and Azusa, observing the situation, believe that Kunieta is in trouble. Azusa decides to arrange a double date with Kazu to help Kunieta with Oga. Elaine joins in to help them. After a few hours, Kazu and Azusa go to the amusement park with Elaine and Furuichi. Furuichi is upset that he doesn't want to go on a date with Elaine. Elaine brings Oga and Kunieta through his dimensional portal, turning the double date into a triple date. Oga enjoys a pleasant moment with Kunieta, and everyone notices that they are having a good time together. However, N's arrival interrupts the conversation, and Beal throws an ice cream at N, almost making him cry, and decides to ride a roller coaster despite Furich's warnings. Elaine appears and teleports the boys to the ground to avoid disaster. N's maids struggle to calm him down after the scare. After N is out of sight, the boys learn that he has entered the haunted house in the park. Cunieta uses his sword to destroy the house and prevent N from being scared by the monsters. After this day in the park, Isabella mentions that N's followers plan to attack Oga and Beale so that 
that N will be the sole destroyer of the human world. This, they believe, will determine who is best suited to inherit Behemoth's throne. Isabella warns Hilda that the division of Behemoth's 34 pillars, a group of demonic warriors, could appear at any moment, so they must be careful. After that, we see Ogre resting in the courtyard of the academy, reflecting on the words of N and her maidservants. It is still unclear to him who the 34 pillars of Behemoth are. At that moment, Furuichi appears happy after buying a new strawberry chocolate roll. However, Oga, with one punch, blows up Furuichi's roll, leaving him surprised. Meanwhile, Tojo has a private meeting with Nanami, who delivers a message from Izuma. Tojo thanks her and tells Nanami that Izuma will probably come to the place where he has summoned him. Nanami recalls her past with Tojo when she met him at his father's clinic. The two met when Tojo needed treatment for injuries caused in trouble. Tojo later gets involved in a street fight and is about to be attacked from behind. Nanami shows up to protect him, which leads to a scolding from his parents for getting into trouble. It is revealed that both Tojo and Nanami knew Sayatome as children and are both fond of him. However, Nanami's memories are interrupted when Tojo stops Furuichi's role from hitting Nanami. Elsewhere, N is at a game center where he repeatedly loses at an arcade. She asks her maids for more money, but they tell her they have no more. Kanzaki appears and tells N that he should stop being so noisy, revealing that he is her rival in the game. The conversation is interrupted when Haimkawa, the owner of the game center appears. Kanzaki and Haimkawa argue and fight on the spot. N interrupts the argument by playing another video game, and Kanzaki and Haimkawa suggest that he play online games at home. Back with Oga, he returns home and is greeted by his mother, who reveals that Hilda is learning to make croquettes. Despite Oga's initial refusal, his mother cries and his sister threatens him, forcing him to help in the kitchen. Hilda has used ingredients from the demon world, and Oga and Hilda must go out to buy more ingredients and cook croquettes from scratch. Meanwhile, Cuniata is in the library studying about demons, but realizes he doesn't understand anything. Izuma appears and warns Cuniata that some things are better left unknown. Afterwards, Cuniata meets Oga and Hilda, and as they talk about the foods of both worlds, Hilda asks Cuniata to try her croquettes one day. Before Cuniata can return home, she is captured by a demon named Hikados, a member of the 34 Pillars of Behemoth, who plans to use her to create a contract and unleash his ultimate power on the human world. On the other hand, Tojo is on a construction site with Nanami waiting for Izuma, who shows up to keep his word to fight Tojo. After an intense fight, Izuma and Tojo are injured. Back with Oga, he decides to fight alongside Hilda to save Cuniata from Hikado's clutches. He activates his Zebel spell to use the Zebel Blast technique, but Hikado stops the attack with one hand and reveals that his target was always Hilda. Hilda appears to free Cuniata, but Hakados pierces her body with a spear, leaving Oga stunned. After that, we see how Beale is about to cry, but Hilda reveals that she is still alive and asks the boys to escape. The Proto notices that Cuniata has woken up, so he asks him to look after Hilda while he confronts Hikados. Meanwhile, the fight between Tojo and Izuma continues, and Kanzaki and a follower of Cuniata's named Yuka show up to secretly observe the fight. The confrontation is interrupted when two demons from the 34 pillars, Naga and Graffle, appear to defeat Izuma, sensing his demonic power. Realizing that Izuma is weak, Naga believes he is only a descendant of a low-level demon cast into the human world. Izuma remembers the Saint Ishiyama headmaster's warning about not facing pure demons, but decides to confront the demons who are after the protagonist in order to protect his academy. However, Graffle takes Izuma down easily with his great physical strength. Tojo intervenes to stop Graffle and decides to take on the demon with all his might. Meanwhile, the Prota faces problems fighting against Hikados, as he is superior. However, the Prota creates a strategy to stop Hikados' spear and get close enough to use his demonic technique at close range. Hikados reveals his ability to parry the Prota's attack with one hand, leaving him in shock. Sayatome appears to save his pupil, pushing Hikados aside with ease. Sayatome then activates his massive demonic power as a spellmaster, completely controlling his contract with a demon.
the demons Naga and Graffel decide to leave the boys alive to search for Sayatome. Sayatome, being a spellmaster, demonstrates his power by confronting the demons, forcing them to use a teleportation device to escape and return to their world. Thus, the Prota and the girls survive the attack of the Pillars. After that, we see Elaine bring Furkas and Lamia from the demon world to take care of Hilda and Oga's wounds. Lamia scolds Oga for allowing Hilda to be seriously injured, while Furkas mentions that Hilda is now out of danger thanks to Cunieta's first aid, which relieves everyone. Sayatome blames Oga for being weak and asks him to attend school the next day, as he will teach him the correct way to use his powers. After this, Sayatome leaves Oga's house. Meanwhile, Oga's sister asks Cunieta about the Red Tails, being the founder and first leader of this group. She then asks Oga to accompany Cunieta home. Oga takes Cunieta on a bicycle, venting about feeling helpless for being weak and unable to protect anyone. After a few minutes, they arrive at Cunieta's house, who asks Oga if he will really go to Sayatome to become stronger. Oga replies that he won't do it out of pride. At that moment, Cunieta's grandfather appears, and Oga comes up with the idea of asking his grandfather to train him to prove that he doesn't need Sayatome's help to become powerful. The next day, Oga begins his training with Cunieta's grandfather believing Cunieta to be the cousin of the girl he found in the park. Coda appears, surprising Cunieta by the proto's foolishness. Cunieta's grandfather orders Oga to clean the dojo non-stop, and Oga obeys, thinking that this job must have secret training. Meanwhile, Beale decides to help Oga clean, wanting to become stronger. Coda tries to show superiority by cleaning along with the boys. Beale tries hard not to lose to his little rival. Oga and Beale end up cleaning the dojo courtyard, and Oga tries to keep his spirits up despite doubting Cunieta's grandfather's intentions. After a few hours, Tamo's shadows appear in the dojo and mess up what Oga cleaned up. Oga sends them flying in one fell swoop. Elsewhere, Hilda talks to Furcus and Lamia, who mentioned that the demons will return in a week to gather power. Hilda asks Lamia to find N before Behemoth's 34 pillars return, and Lamia agrees. Therefore, she decides to look for Furuichi, as he is the only person she knows in this world to ask him for help in finding N. Once alone with him, she explains that N's servants have come to attack Oga and Beale, which is why they must now find N. Lamia also reveals to Furuichi that Oga and Cunieta have gone on a trip with their grandfather to the mountains to train and become stronger, so they are alone at the moment. After a few hours, we see how Furuichi and Lamia visit a game center to try to find N there. After searching for a long time, they only find Kanzaki, whom they decide to ask about N. However, he mentions that, despite having seen him, he is no longer here. The boys meet Yuka and decide to ask her if she has seen a guy with green hair, to which she replies that she has not. At that, the boys run into Haimkawa because he is the owner of the game center, which makes Kanzaki angry and tries to fight him as usual. They decide to settle their differences in a video game. After this, Furichi decides to gather most of the boys from his classroom in a restaurant to tell them about the demons that will be coming to attack them soon, but he lies to them by telling them that they are students from a school called Akumano. Furichi tells them that Ishiyama school's reputation is at stake if they lose to another school. So they all decide to help Furuichi find N under the lie that he is the leader of the Akumano school. Meanwhile, we see Tojo meet with Sayatome to tell him about how strong the guys he faced were. Sayatome responds by telling him that they were real demons, but Tojo can't understand him because he's not very smart. This causes Sayatome to become upset. But even so, he decides to teach Tojo how to fight demons, as he realizes that his student is already involved in this problem. Tojo accepts without a second thought. On the other hand, we see how Oga finds himself on a train with Cunieta, his grandfather and the shadows of Teimo, as they have also decided to travel to become stronger in the Maputatsu Mountains. However, Cunieta's grandfather decides to make the journey longer by taking really dangerous roads so that the boys can train as they move towards their destination. After a few hours, we see the boys arrive at a waterfall. Upon seeing it, Oga and Tamo's shadows decide to train under it. 
believing that Cunietta's grandfather plans to ask them to do this. However, Cunietta's grandfather tells them that their first test will be to pick up a rock, which makes Oga think that the old man has tricked them and does not plan to train them. Despite this, he decides to look for a rock to compete against Tamo's shadows to see who can get the biggest one. After a while, the boys return to Cunietta's grandfather by some huge rocks. Once there, the old man tells them that they must now break the rock they brought with their hands, and that they will have no food until they succeed. Hearing this, the boys are shocked, and Oga tries to break his rock but hurts his hand. One of the shadows asks Cunietta's grandfather if it is possible to complete this test, to which the old man responds by asking Cunietta to demonstrate how to break the rock in two. Cunietta uses his ability to cut the rock by concentrating all his energy on a single point. After this, the old man mentions that the most important part of this test is to learn how to use their powers, breathing, posture, and concentration. The boys decide to try to break the rocks. On the other hand, Furuichi and the others seek out a gang known as the Skullheads to get information from N. The members of the Tohoshinki show up to beat up the Skullheads and get the information. Afterwards, the boys go to a game center to look for N, but realize that it is the Sonata brothers and the MK5s with green hair wasting time. Back with Oga, Tamo's shadows manage to break their stones and win the right to eat, but Oga still fails the test because he plans to destroy the biggest stone in the area. At night, the old man takes the boys to the nearest temple on the mountain, where they meet a priestess named Issa, who identifies Beel as a demon. The old man tells Oga that if he does not develop his own strength, he will not be able to use his demonic power well. Surprised by the old man's knowledge of demons, Oga decides to return to the mountains to try to break the rock. The next day, Kunida observes how Oga has managed to pass the test using his own strength. However, the old man sends Oga to Sayatome, who is in the mountains, to continue the second part of Oga's training. On the other hand, Ishiyama's group heads to Haimkawa's house after learning that N has been playing video games online. Haimkawa reveals to them that he has a video game room in his huge building where they can play games to accomplish their mission. Once there, Furuichi remembers that N became a fan of fighting games, so Chayaki decides to play being an expert in fighting games. After a few games, Chayaki manages to find N in an online game and defeats him with ease. The boys contact N to ask for his current location, and he proposes that if they manage to defeat him, he will reveal his whereabouts. Chayaki accepts and wins the first few rounds, but then begins to lose, discovering that he is now playing Isabella instead of N. After this, the boys lose several times in different games against N's group, so they decide to return to Haimkawa's house the next day to have their revenge and find out where Beale's brother is. This time, they challenge them to a shooting match, and everyone prepares by creating their own characters. In the 9 vs 9 game, Shiro and Nin, not used to video games, struggle, forcing the rest to try harder to win. Meanwhile, N's servant girls ask him to stay back, arguing that a king must wait as they might make mistakes that lead to defeat. In parallel, Yolda ambushes Chayaki and Nin, and Nin decides to sacrifice herself for Chayaki. Meanwhile, Sayatome captures Oga to prevent him from escaping. Despite promising not to run away, Oga tries to escape, prompting Sayatome to follow him. Oga uses what he has learned from the old man to break rocks in his path, and Sayatome does the same, destroying a large rock blocking Oga's exit. After a few hours, Oga still refuses to be trained by Sayatome because of his pride. However, Beale approaches Sayatome and asks him to teach him, surprising Oga. Finally, Oga agrees to train with Sayatome to surpass him in strength, and Sayatome is happy with the decision. And back with the Ishiyama boys, we see how Chayaki managed to revive Nin as she is the group's doctor. This allows them to escape from Yolda and her followers. However, they both notice how Yolda has obtained a huge tank and uses it against their companions causing concern. Yuka appears with a huge robot that crushes Yolda's tank with ease, giving the boys the upper hand in the fight thanks to the giant robot. However, Yuka accidentally steps on a mine and destroys her robot, causing the boys to lose the lead. Haimkawa gets angry with Yuka. Meanwhile, the prota begins his training, which consists of recording a song while dancing. Oga gets angry with Sayatome and decides to kick him, believing that he is just annoying him. 
Sayatome reveals that the player is from the demon world and has the ability to turn the voice into a physical being. He summons a copy of Beal, and Oga must defeat it to pass the test. The copy of Beal proves to be powerful and takes Oga down with ease. However, Oga notices a rabbit and decides to follow it into the forest. Oga chases Beal's copy to defeat it. Meanwhile, Issa takes Cunietta to a special temple to become stronger. They meet Oga and Beal's copy, confusing the two. Oga continues to chase Beal's copy to defeat her. Once alone, Oga asks Beal to pretend to be a rabbit so that the copy will chase him. This lowers Beal's copy's guard, allowing Oga to defeat it. Meanwhile, En's maids hack the game and defeat the boys easily. Haimkawa asks the boys to buy time while he leaves the room. He returns, revealing that he bought the game and the developers revive the boys as zombies. They begin to fight back and Haimkawa summons giant robots that combine into a powerful delinquent robot. It defeats En and her maids, allowing the boys to win the game and celebrate their victory. However, after a few hours, it was revealed that Oga did not accept defeat and continued to challenge the boys. They have been playing non-stop against Oga, but have not managed to get his current location. Furichi discovers that Lamia is close to Oga, so he decides to talk to Oga pretending to be Lamia, exciting him. However, Furuichi makes the mistake of revealing his identity and Oga stops answering him. The boys decide to take a break by going to a nearby supermarket to buy food and drinks. Once back at Haimkawa's building, they find Yolda dressed as a secretary and decide to follow her to her room. They discover that Oga was always inside a room in Haimkawa's building. Inside the room, Oga is nervous as he watches Lamia because of his feelings for her. However, he notices that Lamia has become close to Furuichi and feels jealous. Furuichi decides to return to the others, but Yolda stops him and tells him that he must now play with Oga. He tries to escape with Lamia but realizes that Yolda has altered the space, making the room separate from the outside with no way out for the boys. Hilda communicates with Lamia via a device and is transported to the room thanks to Elaine's enhanced powers. She reveals that she has fully recovered and decides to fight Yolda to humiliate her. Hilda uses her sword and easily destroys Yolda's weapon, stunning everyone. Satra and Isabella show up to stop Hilda, but she, angry at Oga's maids, confronts the three and defeats them with ease, cheering Furuichi. A dimensional portal opens, revealing that several pillar demons have returned to the human world to attack Oga. Hilda decides to defeat one of them by sending it to the roof of the Haimkawa building with a single attack. The Ishiyama boys appear and mistake the demons for Akimano students. Tojo also shows up to confront them. Nin contacts Kunieta to explain the situation, and Kunieta meets Angelica, asking to be transferred to the Haimkawa building to help her friends. Hilda finds herself facing Naga, Graffel and Hikados on the roof of the building, ready to face them alone. At that moment, Oga appears thanks to Elaine, revealing that he has finished his training with Sayatome. Meanwhile, the Ishiyama boys are seen facing weaker pillar demons, which they manage to stand up to as they are stronger than before. Furichi decides to escape with Lamia when he realizes the danger present in the fight. However, he stops his escape when he sees Angelica appear with Kunieta, who uses a technique learned in the mountains of Maputatsu to easily defeat a lesser demon. Kunieta and Tojo arrive at the roof of the Haimkawa building to face the stronger demons. Oga asks them to back off, as he plans to take on all three demons at once. Seeing Oga's determination, Tojo and the girls decide to withdraw from the fight. Hikados tries to kill Oga, but Oga uses a demonic seal and hits him until he activates the seal unleashing the Zebel emblem and defeating Hikados within seconds. Everyone is amazed to witness Oga's strength. Oga then questions Naga, a high commander of the Pillars, about his plans. Naga reveals that once he defeats Oga, he will take Beel to the demon world and allow En to destroy the humans. Ogre refuses and mentions that Beel will not destroy humanity because he is his father. This revelation leaves everyone shocked. Naga decides to fight in earnest after hearing Oga's words. Oga prepares a demonic milk in a bottle for a special technique. After drinking it, he breaks the boundary of the bond between him and Beale, losing his sanity and gaining great strength, which he uses to defeat Graffle. 
He then confronts Naga and causes him various problems. Oga decides to continue drinking the milk from the bottle, merging completely with Beel and gaining immense power. The three demons try to stop Oga, but he activates a powerful demonic technique that destroys the roof of the building, defeating all the demons but leaving him unconscious. Oga and Beel return to their original forms, and notices the big fight outside his room and observes Furuichi with Lamia. N decides to return to the demon world with his subordinates, warning Furuichi that he will soon return with his entire army, which causes fear in Furuichi. And after this, Furuichi is still disturbed by what has just happened. Hilda responds by telling him that she is not worried as her business with N has nothing to do with Beel, which increases Furuichi's concern. Lamia appears in Oga's room and mentions that Beel has woken up after the fight against the pillars. The boys decide to visit him, but it is revealed that Oga and Beel have swapped bodies, leaving Oga in shock as he realizes the reality. After this, the boys come to the conclusion that this change occurred as a side effect of the merger between Oga and Beel during their last fight. Oga remembers Sayatome's warnings about not using that technique for too long due to future problems. Beel wakes up in Oga's body, and the first thing she tries to do is take off her clothes forcing the boys to stop her from doing so. Hilda realizes that the situation is worse than she imagined and decides to take Oga and Beel to the academy to find Sayatome to help them. Once inside the school, several people try to stop Oga, but Hilda prevents them. Beel is tired from all the walking and Hilda decides to carry him to the teacher's lounge. Oga asks her to stop because he is being embarrassed, so he decides to carry Beale using his baby body to the staff room, where he learns that Sayatome has not yet arrived. Oga and Beale are forced to wait in Ishiyama's classroom. Oga begins to teach Beale how to behave inside his body. Beale annoys Kanzaki, which causes Kanzaki to become angry and try to attack him. However, Beale is distracted by a strange presence and decides to follow her. She meets Kunieta, whom she joyfully hugs, causing Kunieta to blush when she thinks it is Oga. The boys appear and tell Kunieta everything that is happening, and she decides to help them find Beel, whom they get on the roof of the school. Kunieta and Hilda start fighting over Beel to find out who she prefers more. They both danced and sing to get the baby's attention. Kunieta reveals that her training has allowed her to follow Hilda's movements. Hilda realizes that Kunieta possesses a demonic power that attracted Beel earlier. The duel between the girls ends when Oga and Beel suddenly return to their bodies. After this, Oga meets with Sayatome alone, who mentions that the body swapping is a side effect that will wear off in a while and there is nothing to worry about. And after this, Sayatome tells Oga that he must master his fusion technique soon, as it would be a problem for Oga to lose consciousness every time he fights, especially when the day comes when Behemoth returns with his entire army. Sayatome mentions that he is helping Izuma and Tojo with their training to become stronger and defeat demons. He warns Oga that he shouldn't waste any more time, as they might overtake him at some point. After this, Nin asks Kunieta to lend her his house to hold a Red Tails meeting. Although Kunieta is retired from the group, she agrees to let them hold their meeting at her house. The girls are delighted as their main plan is to get Kunieta back on the team. After a few hours, Kunieta returns home and it is revealed that Isa introduced him to a demon named Koma in the Maputatsu Mountains. Koma becomes Kunieta's ally so that she can use demonic powers along with her abilities. The next day, Kunieta waits for the 300 members of the Red Tails, but only five show up. Kunieta thinks that the other girls have gotten boyfriends. The conversation is interrupted when Koma appears and gropes the girls, visible only to Kunieta. Then the Taniuri, a rival group, show up to challenge the Red Tails and take control of the area. Nin confronts the Taniuri leader, but Koma intervenes by groping the Taniuri women, forcing them to retreat. After this, Kunieta tells Nin that he already knew what her intentions were by coming to her house. However, Nin asks her to be proud of being the current leader of the Red Tails. Nin and the other girls decide to leave Kunieta's house. And the next day, in a scene change, it is observed that it is starting to get very cold in the city. 
Hilda tries to dress Beale, but he only allows her to wear a scarf. After this, Oga and the others go to St. Ishiyama Academy and notice that it has started to snow heavily, which is unusual for the city. Kunieta enters the hall and reveals that there is no one else in the academy, being the only ones present. They hear a noise outside and discover that Kazu and Azusa have suspended classes due to the heavy storm. Kazu informs them about the suspension, as no one else had told them. Kanzaki wonders what Sayatome is doing as a teacher, to which Ogre replies that he is training Tojo and Izuma. The storm worsens, and they realize that they were trapped in the academy. They hear a noise in the bathroom and decide to investigate, finding Goodnight inside the toilet. Later, they discover one of the Sonata brothers trapped among the food. Kanzaki remembers a song that mentions eliminating delinquents from the academy in different ways. They decide to go after the person behind these events, but Kanzaki and Shiro are defeated. The boys ask Kazu how the song continues for clues. They decide to use Furuichi as a decoy, but the enemy doesn't show up. It is revealed that it was because of Haimkawa. Nanami is also at the academy and decides to help. The song mentions the disappearance of the delinquents. There are fewer students left until Oga is left alone with the girls in the classroom. Kunieta fantasizes about being alone with Oga but realizes the emergency. Oga decides to drink the demon milk to solve the problem, but the enemy exchanges the milk for a sleeping pill. Oga falls asleep, the academy freezes, and the girls are forced to escape and stay together to fight the cold. Kunieta discovers that Koma was the cause of the girls being left alone and realizes his plan. He beats up Koma, causing the weather to return to normal and resolving the situation. And in a scene change, Beelzebub is seen playing darts in a bar, where he meets a beautiful demoness who catches his eye. She mentions her love for a show in which the son of a dragon king conquers the lair of his enemy. Beelzebub decides to create his own show to impress this woman. Hilda is given the mission to make Beel conquer a place in the human world while she records him to create a show. She informs Oga, Furuichi and Lamia, who must watch Beel on the sly while she carries out her mission. Hilda informs Beel that this time he must carry out the task alone, to which he agrees. After listening to Oga's advice to do a good job, Beel sets off for his destination. Along the way, Beel faces small, non-hazardous obstacles but encounters Kanzaki. Lamia intervenes by shooting a dart at Kanzaki, knocking him unconscious and causing him to lose his memory. Shiro and Haimkawa are also knocked unconscious. Beel is frightened to witness this and decides to continue his journey. She encounters a huge dog that tries to steal her juice, but she remembers Oga's words and defeats it with her special urine. After a long journey, it is revealed that the territory Beel must conquer is Furwich's house. Beel decides to use Elaine as a weapon, destroying part of Furwich's house and fulfilling Beelzebub's mission, affecting Furuichi. Furuichi heads to the academy determined not to hang out with strange demons, but his thoughts are interrupted by Yuko, a girl who is always sick and with whom he falls in love. Furuichi visits Yuko every day in the infirmary, worrying his friends. Koma reveals to Kunieta that Yuko is a ghost using Furuichi. Kunieta informs Oga, and they both go to the infirmary to prevent Furuichi from being destroyed. However, they watch as Yuko confesses her love to another ghost named Johnny, who has been possessing Furuichi to talk to Yuko. Both ghosts manage to leave this world together, thanking Furuichi for his help, which makes him feel bad when he realizes the truth. And then, Sadohara enters Ishiyama's classroom to replace Sayatone. Oga again gets into trouble with the school delinquents by not showing respect for his new teacher. Sayatome shows up upset to take Oga away, and upon witnessing this, Furuichi pretends to feel sick to find out what is going on. Once in the staff room, Sayatome informs the boys that Beale's copy is missing, which could be a serious problem. If the copy is away from Beale, it could transform and cause chaos in the human world. On the other hand, Hankawa comes across the copy in his house and reveals that he took it with him, as his family had a similar statue that increased his luck and wealth. Hankawa decides to take care of the copy as he watches his luck increase significantly. 
Meanwhile, Oga and Furuichi investigate at the academy to find out who took the copy but fail to identify Hankawa as he had his hair down. The boys search for a handsome young man who doesn't look like a delinquent but can't find the culprit. They return to Sayatome to report that they do not know who stole the copy. Meanwhile, Beale's copy evolves into a giant with wings who captures Haimkawa and takes him to the academy. The boys meet the copy and decide to follow Dark Beale in Haimkawa's butler's helicopter to an uninhabited island. On the island, Beale accidentally drinks a special demonic milk and becomes a giant, facing his dark version. The two Beals have an epic fight on the island, and after a while, Beale rips off Dark Beale's wings, returning him to normal. Beale returns with Sayatome, proclaiming himself the victor of the fight, while Haimkawa is rescued by his butler, deciding not to pick up any more abandoned babies. After a few days, we see Haimkawa returning to school with his hair down and without his trademark topknot. Neither Sadohara nor anyone else recognizes him when they see him at the school entrance. In the classroom, none of the boys can identify Haimkawa, and Kanzaki decides to approach him to ask who he really is. Haimkawa reveals his name and explains that he removed his topknot because he ran out of the special gel needed to do so. Several female students from the academy start visiting the delinquent's room when they learn of the presence of a handsome guy. This irritates the delinquents, and Kanzaki blames Haimkawa for his new look. Haimkawa tries to use an ordinary pomade, but only manages to look more attractive. He reveals to Kanzaki that his butler is going to an island to get the special pomade he needs. Meanwhile, Haimkawa wanders around the academy, romancing several students with his new appearance. As he is about to return home, he is stopped by thugs who are looking for Haimkawa, but don't recognize him without his topknot. Kanzaki notices that Haimkawa has forgotten his mobile phone and takes a call from the butler, who asks for his help as he is surrounded by thugs and his power is reduced by the fact that he does not have his topknot. Haimkawa defeats one of the thugs, but they seek reinforcements, putting him in trouble. The butler appears to throw the special ointment at him, but it is deflected by the wind. Kanzaki intervenes and uses his kick to help Haimkawa get the gel, allowing him to form his topknot and regain his strength, easily defeating the thugs. In another scenario, Oga's father decides to spend his day off at home, but receives a visit from Beelzebub looking for Hilda. The father informs Beel's maid and entertains her while she prepares a welcoming ceremony for Beelzebub with the help of the boys. However, she discovers that Beelzebub has already left, making all efforts in vain. After a few days, Oga decides to take a break from training to control the merger with Beel. Furuichi is annoyed that he has spent a lot of time and effort buying bottles and powdered milk. Despite Furuichi's anger, Oga chooses to ignore him and immerses himself in reading a manga without a care in the world. Meanwhile, Furuichi receives a letter addressed to Hilda. Oga and Lamia notice the letter and discover that it is a birthday greeting. Upon finding out, the boys start acting strangely towards Hilda, who senses the situation. However, Hilda notices that Beale is also behaving strangely, which leads her to think that Beale hates her. Hilda decides to retire to the park to think about what is happening. In the park, she meets Kuniita and her subordinates, who are on their way to Oga's house. Hilda tries to get explanations, but the girls run away to avoid confrontation. Hilda suspects that the boys are hatching a plan to trick Beale into conquering the demon world, which infuriates her and prompts her to head to Oga's house to confront them. On arrival, Hilda is greeted with joy and birthday greetings from the boys who present her with a special gift. However, Hilda reveals that it is not her birthday, and it is discovered that the letter was for another girl from the demon world. The boys realize that they have wasted their time, but Hilda appreciates the gesture when she discovers that she has been given an umbrella. Afterwards, Kanzaki, Haimkawa, Natsu and Shiro meet in the academy hall to look for ways to become stronger and overcome Oga. They decide to form a new delinquent group as the Tohoshinki is no longer active. After searching for a new special technique, Haimkawa buys costumes for the group, generating curiosity and strangeness among the girls in the hall, except for Chayaki, who is excited to see the costumes. 
After this, Oga heads to Cunietta's house to continue his fusion training with Beale. At the house, Comer realizes the possibility of using the same technique with Cunietta to gain control over his body. After a few hours, Coma offers Cunietta a piece of bread as part of Oga's technique, but she rejects him with a powerful blow, expressing her lack of trust in Coma. After the failed attempt, Coma shares his situation with Beale and Koda, who, being innocent children, can see and understand Coma. Both give him advice on how to achieve his dream after learning of his failed attempt. Koda suggests that he deliver the bread in small pieces so that Cunietta will not notice. Inspired by the idea, Koma prepares a special dinner for Cunietta, hiding the pieces of bread on the plate. In the evening, Koma presents the dinner to Cunietta, but his excessive excitement causes him to bleed from his nose, alerting Cunietta that something is not right. Once again, Cunietta sends Koma flying with a powerful punch as he realizes he has done something wrong with the food. Later, Hilda goes shopping and wins tickets for a hot springs trip for five people. Oga's family are delighted to hear of this and decides to enjoy the trip together. While enjoying the place, Furuichi, who is skiing in the snowy mountains, is surprised by Elaine, who takes him to the hot springs where Oga and his family are. In parallel, Oga talks to Hilda, while they are both in separate baths. He discovers that Hilda comes from a family of demon servants with a remarkable lineage. Hilda reveals that she was never able to share with her parents as an ordinary family due to responsibilities. Meanwhile, Furuichi hears Hilda's voice and gets excited, but ends up meeting the owner of the inn, which scares him. After a few days, Oga and the other boys learn that Ishiyama School is about to reopen. The news fills the delinquents with joy, as they will be able to return to the place where they were happy. Kanzaki encourages everyone to skip school to visit Ishiyama before it officially reopens. Elsewhere, an old man is looking for Oga, who tries to escape when he learns that he is wanted. Meanwhile, Oga decides to have lunch on the roof with Beale, but forgets his lunch. Hilda appears to give him his lunch and then decides to hide Oga as she senses a great demonic power. At that moment, Sayatome, Cunietta's grandfather and the headmaster of St. Ishiyama Academy appear to stop the old man, revealed to be Behemoth. They start attacking him with all their might. On the other hand, the boys arrive at Ishiyama School and discover that it is now called Akumano School. This revelation makes them suspect something strange. Behemoth reveals that he created the Akumano School for N and the Pillar Demons. Unaware of this information, the boys decide to go inside to investigate. Inside the school, they are stopped by three low-ranking pillars, Agile, O'Donnell, and Zella. Agile defeats two Ishiyama delinquents with a single finger and threatens to kill the others. Cunieta appears at that moment, as Koma sensed a powerful demonic presence nearby. Cunieta and Koma decide to face each other with determination, and Koma takes the form of a huge beast to increase his powers and fight alongside Cunieta. At that moment, the fight between Cunieta and Agile begins, and the two appear to be evenly matched in strength. Agile is excited to call Ishiyama's boys useless, but Cunieta responds by claiming that there is no one in her class who is weak. Cunieta decides to use her most powerful technique to end the fight, and the two girls have a crossover attack, resulting in the destruction of Cunieta's sword. However, Egil has suffered more damage, and Cunieta emerges as the winner of the fight. After this, the Ishiyama delinquents who were not sent to Saint Ishiyama appear being controlled to attack the boys who are forced to fight until they feel cornered. N appears before them and proposes a duel between Ishiyama and Akumano to get his companions back. The Ishiyama delinquents are forced to accept N's offer. Meanwhile, Behemoth notices Oga's presence and decides to rush toward him. Oga recognizes him as the leader of the 34 pillars, but Behemoth reveals that his son Jabberwock is the current leader. Jabberwock appears showing his great power and Hilda decides to prepare to face him. Jabberwock summons his dragon Sodom, captures Hilda easily, and Oga tries to save her, but is stopped by Sayatome, Cunieta's grandfather and the headmaster. Jabberwock decides to return to Akumano with Sodom and Hilda. However, Oga sneaks onto Sodom's back and uses the milk technique to fight Jabberwock. 
Although initially inferior, Ogre runs out of milk and attacks Sodom to free Hilda. However, Hilda pushes Oga away to prevent Sodom from devouring them both. At this point, Beale decides to eat the kibble Hilda brought to Oga to have the same effect as the demonic milk. This leads to the merging of Oga and Beale, breaking the boundary and saving Hilda. Together they take down Jabberwock and Sodom against the Acumen Academy. Oga and Beale use all their strength to eliminate the pillars, resulting in the demise of the Akumano school, the pillars and finally, Oga and Beale after this powerful attack. Therefore, all the delinquents start to mourn Oga and Beale's supposed death all day long. After classes, they decide to go to the river, where it all started, to mourn the loss of their partner. At that moment, Elaine appears and brings back Oga and Beale, revealing that they were only transported to the demon world. The boys are shocked by this revelation. The next day, Furuichi reveals to Oga that Akumano Academy has been transferred as a special class to Saint Ishiyama. Oga meets En, who challenges the boys to a new game. After class, Hilda informs Oga that Beelzebub has decided not to wipe out the humans, which means that Beel and the other demons will have to return to their world. The next day, in a change of scene, Tojo returns to the academy after his training in search of the Akimano members to challenge them to a fight. Kanzaki and Haimkawa decide to follow him, but discover that all the demons have left. Tojo regrets not being able to face strong subjects. Afterwards, we see Oga spend his last night with Beale and his family. The next day, however, Hilda reports that Beale has disappeared, possibly because she does not want to return to the demon world. Oga enlists the help of all the delinquents in Ishiyama to find Beale, and after several hours, he manages to find him at the river where they met, having one last conversation alone. Then, Yolda shows up to take all the demons and Beale away, while Oga and the boys say goodbye to them. After this, we see Ogre return to his old days as a common criminal along with the boys to prove that Ishelma members are the strongest. However, Elaine shows up to bring Beale and Hilda back, mentioning that Beelzebub has changed his mind and has ordered to wipe out humanity. Ogre regains his bond with Beale once again and is forced to raise the future demon king. Thus ends the A.